Pumping your fist and not gas. People love to post gas prices on social media. Yo, it's the gas price rage of 2022. Look how expensive it is in my neighborhood. And by the way, it's still not more expensive than it is right here. I know. Whoa, that's, that should be bitching the most. Yeah, that's why uh, I get a kick out of it. It's like, can you believe in Iowa? It's $4? Yeah, <laughs> it's been fucking four plus dollars for five years out here. And we be rocking out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yo, when did Chris Kattan make our sound bites? It's a good one, Spot. I like Chris Kattan's laugh. He's always been here. Nah, you never let the laugh play. (laughs) 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 Chris Kattan, I was great. Uh, Now nobody likes me. Man, he was on fire. Oh, I feel bad for that guy. I know he did a, a few bad things to somebody. His friendship with Will Ferrell sort of went down the tubes. And I don't think he ever recovered career-wise because of it. And he regrets it. I read some story. He did something to Will Ferrell. He did something to somebody. Yo, and Will that was Ferrell? the end of Chris Kattan. Is Will Ferrell like the mafia of Hollywood? Well, yeah. If you don't get along with Will Ferrell anymore, arrivederci. Well, unless you're Adam McKay, his old writing partner, who is behind that new Lakers show. Winning time. But the rise Winning. of the Lakers dynasty. He chose... John, John C. C. Riley. Riley over no, I'll Will. tell you what, and he did the right thing because I don't think Will Farrell would have had the acting chops, the serious chops enough, or we're not able to see Will Farrell in anything but something goofy to the point where it wouldn't have worked. And John C. Riley is a little more, what's the word? He's broader in his acting range. Yeah, he's, he's, got, robust. he's got yeah more robust. So enjoy that show. You know, it's a Wednesday. It's Cavino and Rich. It's an interesting thought. I didn't plan on talking about this, but the Adam McKay, Will Ferrell story, we have talked about it. I remember where we talked about it. I was in Mexico. No, where was I? Dominican Republic. And I probably heard that song you were playing. And you and I talked about how that was when they announced the Lakers show was coming out and how Adam McKay and Will Ferrell were best bros. They used to be best buddies. And they wrote every Will Ferrell awesome movie from the 2000s together. But when they did the Lakers show, he said, yo, I'm going to go with John C. Riley." And Will Ferrell really wanted to play Bus. And they're like, yeah, I don't think it's the right fit. And he's like, well, then fuck you for a lifetime. And Will Ferrell has not talked to his lifetime writing partner since. So if you're saying John C. Riley is the right choice, then you know what? It's got to be tough, but can you imagine that decision? It's not easy. Have you ever had to make a decision like that? Professionally. Like, I like this person better, but you're not the one for the job. Yo, we can work together on other things, but you're not the right one for this job. Mm, not really. You know, the biggest decisions we've made career-wise was, you know, firing and hiring agents. Never easy. Yeah. Firing our original producer to hire spot. What? By the oh. way, I have an update on Sammy J. Oh. Yeah, I'll give you a quick update on Sammy J, our original producer. It's kind of cool. But yeah, no, it's 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 but Chris Catan, according to page six, yeah. his sex life destroyed his friendship with Will Farrell. He was too busy. Bang- oh. no, it, it, this was a recent story in page six. I'm too busy having sex. And I remember reading it. 
It explains he said that Lorne Michaels was encouraging him to have sex with who's Amy Heckerling again? Uh, the writer of uh, of, of, of Clueless. No, oh, did she? Yeah, I think she's involved in it. Did she? Uh, well, yes, I know and she they wrote were Clueless. All friends, and, uh, and he was like, times. I think he was banging her. Uh, yeah, yeah, spot right. Her. Uh, he was banging her. Like Will Ferrell didn't know about it, and he didn't like being the guy that didn't know. And Chris Kattan was like a wild man. It got in the way of their friendship. Um. Well, Chris Kattan's back in the limelight because he's on Big Brother. Yeah, you know that? Yeah. Celebrity yeah, Big Brother. Yeah, Celebrity Big Brother. But well, he's like weird looking now. And sometimes you're... He's always been weird looking. What do you mean yeah, now? Sometimes, sometimes your penis could I be your worst... Uh, sometimes your penis could be your worst guide. I know you've heard separately. No, and mine's a divining rod. Never let your penis be your guide. Yeah. But yeah, the sex life ruined the friendship. So yeah. Oh, in order for her to, to direct the film... Lauren Michaels pressured him into having a sexual relationship with her. Wow. And Will Ferrell was like, I thought we were bros. Bros. And he was banging everybody. And Chris Kattan regrets it and reached out to Will Ferrell. He was ignored by him. And, you know, it's one of his biggest regrets in Hollywood. And the reason I bring that up is because way back on a Wednesday, Spot played the night at the Roxbury. Emilio! <laughs> Emilio! And you hear him. And Will Ferrell apparently Emilio! had some falling outs with his other buddy. Here's the other question. If your buddy gets the promotion, because him and John C. Riley are really tight. Yeah. We've even talked to John C. Riley about it. We talked about their encounter. He's like, when they first met, do you remember what John Riley said? He said he felt like he found his long lost brother. He said they had the same type of head, same sort of mannerism, same, same sort of way about them. Felt like they were separated at birth. and like stepbrothers. Yeah, and the friendship began. They became best friends. The role that Will Ferrell wanted went to John C. Riley. So do you secretly hold some grudge there, even though you're happy for your bud? I guess if anybody's going to get it, you want your bud to get they it, They have right? so much history, success together okay, and but, individually. That all right, I, but put I, it this way. Let's say there's a woman, forget about a job, a woman you like, but she doesn't like you. You're just not right for her. Would you rather your best bud get it than some other jerk off? I'd rather some other jerk off get it, you know, to be honest. That's a difference. That's enough. a difference between me and you. Are, me and are you. You're gonna say you're big enough to say, "Well, if I can't have her, I'm glad my best bud has no, her." Don't you want to let? Yeah, be real. Because you're too close to the situation. Yeah. You need to be completely right. removed. Uh, from the answer yourself this: When you see like a sitcom or a movie where some dude dies, and his best friend, yeah, but that dude's not there to see this misery. That I get dude, that. Like, like if. Uh, I don't know if some cop dies, sadly, in the line of duty. That's different. If his yeah. buddy... That's part of the mourning process. That happens all the time. Yeah, like if his, buddy mar if his buddy marries his wife. On This Is Us, like Miguel ends up with Mandy Moore. Miguel was meant to Milo, Milo Ventimiglia's best pal. I think I'd rather that. Like if I fell off a bridge, I'd rather... Uh, that's different. I'd rather like one of my buddies that's help like, raise my kids or something. You loved Sarah, but it couldn't be with you and Sarah. So I said, you know what, Rich? Don't worry. I'll step in. I got You're, it. Would you be happier because oh, at least it's me? I'll take or those would cheeks. You, no, um, you'd rather her be with some other dude you don't know. So Will Farrell desperately wanted this role as Jerry Buss because it would probably paint him in a different light. And he probably thought it was this was a great career move for him. You didn't want to do Daddy's Home 3? His, best, but his other best bud wrote it. And was casting it and said, no, nah, you're not the guy. Sorry. So they had a falling out. The, what's, the, what's the guy's name? Adam McKay. Adam McKay. So who got the role? John C. Oh. Riley, who's Will Ferrell's other best bud. Yeah. It's got to be weird. I mean, for the record, make sure make sure the zombies killed me before you uh, impregnate my wife. Nah. Don't pull a Shane and Rick on me, Walking Dead style. Not trying to, but you're saying that you would have the righteous feeling of... Well, at least my best bud got it. I, I guess I, with, women, with women, with no, women, with women, 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 women. I don't want, I don't want Yeah, that. there's going to be a jealousy and a weirdness. Because like, then, right. then I'll wonder, was he, was he eyeing her up the whole time? Like if I, if I had a crush on some girl and I really was loving her, you're right. Maybe I would be like, oh, I don't want her with Cavino. <laughs> right. But it, if it's like, Trust yo, me, there is there, a, you don't want it. If you there was like, that, uh, right? hey, there's a gig to host uh, some reality show. If I didn't get it, I'd rather, really rather Cavino get yeah. it than Mario Lopez well, or uh, Chris Harrison or something like well, that. I, I do believe that Will Ferrell. Let her, I, I, let her you know. S your D first and then pass her along to yeah, Cavino. I'd I, I rather, I rather success for my friends. I mean, 
I'm sure Will Ferrell has enough success where he's okay with it. So, oh, I'll give you one. You said you brought up Sammy J. Our show just all ties together because Spot, I also sent you a clip about Will Ferrell. If you want to cue it up, Kevin Hart talks about how Will Ferrell might be the funniest human on two feet. I thought that was good. Um, in fact, take a listen to this, then I'll tell you. You brought up Sammy J, and I had an interesting thought. Will Ferrell, funniest guy ever. Funniest. He he may be the funniest person. On two feet. I'm talking naturally Classic. from showing up to work to going home. Nicest guy in the world. But I'm talking a different gear, a different gear with funny. There's nobody close. No, nobody close. He will was show up like everything was a bit. So you, you got to figure out that he's in a bit. Like when you show up at work, he's like, morning, you eat breakfast? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, no, I ain't eat breakfast. Oh, why not? You got to eat breakfast. I don't, no, I don't. I don't want to. Not if I want to. You got to. Okay. He's just going to see how long I go back and forth. He went on with this breakfast conversation. He's like, I'm not going to start till you get something. He's fucking funny, man. There's nobody close to Will Ferrell. That's Will great. Ferrell. Yeah. No one funnier oh. than Will Ferrell. And why no one did funnier. we bring this up? How did we get here? Well, way back on a Wednesday, Spot played the Night at the Roxbury clip. Amelia! Just makes me realize that we started yeah. talking about his friendships. He's had a few falling yeah. outs in Hollywood, and that's the update. But put yourself in his shoes. How do you handle that? You know, how do you handle the fact that you were overlooked, but you're Obviously. still successful? You got. Yeah, I mean, Will, you gotta, Will these clunky clown shoes. He's got to be grateful for what you he, got. He could arguably period. be. We we did that list where we said name the best comedic actor of each decade, and we said. 80s, like an Eddie Murphy or a Chevy Chase. 90s, like. A Sandler or Jim Carrey, two thousands. The answer was Will Ferrell. Yeah, I agree. Or we said Ben Stiller. Yeah, Giovanni Lopez says he's not the funniest. So, are you going to believe Giovanni or are you going to believe Kevin Hart? Interesting. Whose perspective Hmm. do I appreciate more when it comes to judging the funniest people? Kevin Hart or Gio in Vegas? Huh. I'm going Kevin Hart. Spot. Who are you going with as far as uh, trusting their comedic scale? Probably Gio. Gio, right? Yeah, Gio. I did say that. I actually found that clip to be interesting when I first saw it because I was thinking, is Will Ferrell highly complimented by that? And does he reach out to Kevin Hart on a serious? Is he ever serious and says just for a second, like, hey, man, it really meant a lot. No, I I don't think you ever take that guy serious. You know how Jimmy Fallon has talked about when he's at a party, he feels this internal pressure to To do an impression or sing on stage. And he feels like he owes it to people. And it's like a weird anxiety and pressure to perform. Mm Mm-hmm. I wonder if Will feels that way because when we interviewed him at Sirius XM. Sure did. He was sort of in character the whole time. He came in, he came into the studio. He mm. saw like some paper hat that was laying in the studio. He put on, he's like, I like my hat, my hat. And the whole time. I don't he, even remember that. I don't oh, remember you know, that. That might have been my Hits One interview because I, I interviewed him twice. I don't think it was us. I interviewed him and I remember him being very... Like just chill, sleepy and subdued, but we oh, had fun I, with him. I had the funniest time with him where he put on a stupid you, hat. You can watch our inter- uh, clip of him here. You know yeah. what? Let's but go. Maybe way that could be back part on of a Wednesday. Which character actually makes you laugh? You see it, you watch it, and you're actually just Man, laughing at how stupid stubble. this character is stubble. and how funny you've played him. Well, it, I mean, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous because I'll, I'll I'll see, you know, I'll, I'll I'll check a movie out on cable and I'll just stop and start watching it, you know, the whole <laughs> way through. So, so many of them, <laughs> stupidly, still make me laugh. Yeah, uh, but I mean, the one, you know, the 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 one movie that I kind of always have to kind of bring up is Anchorman, only because that was a uh, that was a movie that no one wanted to make. We had like ten different studios say no in one day, and we're trying. Here we are trying to sell this you know, this comedy about news people and, and everyone was like, <laughs> that's not funny. And we're like, no, it'll trust me. It'll be funny. And, uh, so the fact that it actually got made and was in theaters and, you know, even the studio at that time didn't quite get it. And, and now it's kind of this cult closet. That's, so that's got to kind of be my favorite. And the lines is quoted and he rocks a must. So, you know, hey, maybe we brought out the real side of Will Ferrell. Yeah, he's, that was very, like, retrospective I, and, and insightful. I've interviewed him a few times. That might have been the only time he was serious. The other time, he maybe put on like, a funny he, hat. Maybe he couldn't keep... He's like, I can't keep up with these bozos. Yeah. I'm just going to be me. Yeah, yeah, it's different. Like, we were in a small, intimate studio. We were actually doing a normal interview. 
I feel like he's used to being that you were like a very morning show vibe. You're like, hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm like, no bullshit. Hey, girl. Will Ferrell, let's be real for a minute. Maybe he saw my stubble and was like, I can't clown around with these guys. It's business time. It's possible. It's possible. Probably it. What happened? So I, I agree. He's he's one of the best. And, you know, that's just the update there, I guess. Now, you brought but up. Enjoy winning time because John C. Riley does a great job. So Adam it. McKay made the right choice. Yeah. There's no question to me. No question. The uh, the interesting is the thing is you brought up Sammy J. I sure did. Our old producer. Before you spot, some would say the good old days. I say the lame days. No, it was, it was a different time. It was a good time. But Honestly, you know what? You guys probably had the most fun in that. No, <laughs> I'll be honest. Years. I think we had the most fun in the early Sexually. days of spot. Early days, the best early... year ever as a show was oh, 07. Like, it was 07. That was my sure. first year. Yeah, we because we really traveled the, the world. We were in Mexico. We oh, hosted all those events. 07 was a wild year was because crazy. 07 was one of the few years I was pretty single. 07 was like, the falling out of one relationship, four months single, and then the start of a new one. Yeah. So it was yeah. perfect 07, storm. Oh, oh, 07. Yeah, it was like a nightmare, but awesome all at the same time. 07 to 09 was, was a wild storm. time in my life. Yeah, it was. Um, it was like. It was wild. Yo. That's how I felt. Is it when I isolate just that one part? <laughs> That's how I felt. Yeah, with me. Uh. Here we get up to that point. Do you, uh, you brought up Sammy J and you were bringing up not jealousy, but we're bringing up, do you, would you want your buddy to end up with the girl you had a crush on? If she didn't like you, would you want your buddy to get the job? Will Ferrell, John C. Riley style. If you weren't the one they chose, I remember there was a weird moment. Now I think it was less of a blow because I know for a fact he was getting paid in gum. But there was a point where Sammy J got some like rock TV gig. And I'm like, yo, Cavino is so much more cut out for this. Holy forgot. What about was this. it? Fuse or? It was, fu- it was Fuse. Wasn't yeah, it? Well, it was a network that's no longer existing. But he wasn't but- working with our show at the time. It was that was after? I think it was after. But Fuse. I think. Was, I don't remember. What was it, like a MTV competitor? Well, here's how I met Sammy J. Sammy J was our original producer for the first, you know, for the come up of it and the first few years right and then he made a few documentaries with us and was a friend of the show his i'll be honest his uh did tickle sack with us his best contributions are things that probably would have translated more now like if we were able to have kept him on i don't know if it would have worked personality wise but he was way into the video element and that would have come in handy later yeah, he was yeah. way ahead of his time he was way ahead of his time he was making documentaries and video clips so well, we were ahead of yeah. our time and just fell fucking yeah. backwards somehow but anyway he was my intern at 92.3 K-Rock New York. I hired the guy, right? So I hired him. He was into music. He was into rock music. He was into doing creative things. And then just from sitting around with the guy all day, because he worked there at K-Rock, became friends. He was just doing comedy pretty much in the office the whole time. And we would share these laughs. He's a funny guy. And Sammy I J needed, was always a really funny guy. When I had something else going on, I needed someone that was willing to play that part. Not someone who wanted to be a rock star or someone like, because I worked with my buddy Al B too, but Al B and I, that we were too on an equal playing field for him to be like, yeah, I'll do what you need. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I needed someone to do what I needed to be done. Yeah. You, you Honestly, you needed someone more on their come up right. that wasn't at your and level like, of experience. So guy. that way, if you needed like, like, I guess you would say like a sidekick or like, you know, an entry level producer, he would take the job and he did at Maxim. But you're, you're. You might not remember the reason that I said, yeah, he's the guy. What stood out to me was he was casted on one of the original like reality shows where people live together. So when he was working with me, he was on a game show, a reality TV show where That's right. people formed an alliance and they were trying to do like didn't he, didn't he win like some obscure amount of money, like seven thousand dollars or seventy-seven thousand dollars? A bunch of money on this 7, stupid 000. game show, and I forget the name of it, but it was one of the first where all these different people live in a house and they're building alliances. It was one of the first, yeah. And it was on TV, and I remember, you know, I'm like, this kid works for me. What is it about this kid? It's funny. Like here I am, like laughing at him on this TV show. And he was shit. just. He was. A, he so was, was like, a, all right. He's the guy. He was a goofy, funny guy that had a good sense of humor, and he fit what we needed at the time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he would fit it now, but now he's like a professor. He's married. Like he might be in a different stage of his life, but he, he was may good not on fit that with us. show. He was like the yeah. 
like the villainous main dude on yeah. that show. So it, he, he it put put him in a different light well, for me. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, it gives you perspective of why Kavino and him clicked and why he was our first producer. I'm just saying that towards the end of his run on our show, and I think it was after he left our show, Fuse, mm -hmm. which was a music network that... Not MTV, not VH1, what, up in Canada, much music. It was like the bunk cable outlet that, I'll be honest, people on radio were like, oh, maybe I'll try to do something there because, hey, extra money, side hustle, anything. But they were doing a rock countdown. And this aired on cable television. And Sammy J got the gig. And I remember did I thinking, go for the gig? Did I even? I don't yes, remember. you did go for the gig. I swear. See, he, he blocked See it out. He blocked it out. It's amazing. Kavino went for works. the gig, and he was one of the finalists. And he's like, yo, bro, I'm one of the finalists for this gig. Man. And I had a, another slice of humble pie. And they're like, all right. And Tasty. the rock countdown on Fuse goes to uh, George Jarush, Sammy J. And he comes, he, he calls us and he goes, you guys, I got the TV See, hosting gig. I'm a better man than he thought That's I was. That's great, I was like, Sammy. Say, hey, if I couldn't get it, I'm glad my buddy Sammy but got my, it. But my thought, though, was, Kavino, it, it, I just I'm remember sure at the time. how you felt at the time. Spot, I remember at the time, the <laughs> only, thing that, that the only thing that probably made Kavino okay with it was I think Sammy probably got paid like, it was something like, Penis. maybe like, Penis. Four or five hundred dollars an episode. Like something, and it was like a weekly thing. So it wasn't even like a, yo, Sammy Jane nailed it. It was like, he did a weekly show and he was getting paid a couple hundred bucks. So I think you were like, yeah, I don't need that anyway. Like you probably rationalized it in your head. I mean, I still think these things, there's people that I work with that are doing TV stuff. And I'm like, maybe I need to get more tattoos or something. It's just that my image doesn't fit what I'm into. You know um, what I mean? What is it? Uh, I remember, because I remember our buddy Nico, who does a morning show in Arizona now, was doing something similar on the pop side. And I was happy for him, but I remember those those gigs on small cable networks paid less than radio. So it was like, yeah, you're on TV on a bunk cable network that has like no viewers. I'm actually proud of myself. But it was still cool though, I guess, right? Proud of myself for saying, okay. And then just, yeah. you know, keep moving forward. You know, like I said about Will Ferrell, and it's so obvious, but you got to be grateful for what, you got and you can't be worrying about what other people are getting. Yeah, it's like, what, what is it? If you're busy watching, you know, other people in the race, you're losing the race, right? You got to be focused on, I know it goes a little different than that, but you get what I'm saying. You someone else said it, on uh, someone else stuff. said it more eloquently. Yeah. Than, than you, know, you, but yeah, I get it. Like don't, if, if you're watching other people, you're taking your eye off your own prize. I don't, I, I used to think about those type of things and I don't anymore. Much at all. Maybe a little bit, but I used to always think like, all right, how am I doing compared to my colleagues in radio? Like guys we came up with. And I'm like, you know, doesn't really matter. You getting a you getting a high five from anyone? No. Are you giving anyone else a high five? No. So, you know, to tie it back to the original conversation, well, Farrell's probably happy for John C. Riley if he's mature and grateful for what he has. Same way I was. For Sammy, Sammy J. J got the fuse gig that I probably should have gotten. But again, maybe the people hiring that show didn't want to deal with my ego and they felt like, hey, we could tell this guy what to do. Or, you know what I mean? Or maybe I mean, he was just better for or, it. it yeah, or matter. could it be? I mean, it's, it's hard to probably think and understand this, but maybe the vibe and look they were going for yeah, wasn't you. Wasn't me. I mean, I don't look like that part. I really don't. And that probably doesn't help. Um, too damn handsome to do the rock thing. You need like a ghoul, some sort of ghoul, like that bald guy on MTV back in the day. Remember that bald guy? Metal. So <laughs> you need a goblin. You need a ghoul you need or a goblin, goblin to host that stuff. Well, um, but speaking of Sammy J, there's an update. Oh, a Sammy J update. Back. And I brought up the game show and the fuse all for a reason because you may say, oh, wow, that's interesting, but it makes sense now. He is a talking head on the History Channel. No. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so perfect for him because... He's again, a history professor. He's a history professor. What happened to our original producer? He became a school teacher, and he teaches history, and that's sort of his passion. And I saw that he was going to be making a cameo, I think on that Lawrence Fishburne one called The Greatest Mysteries, but he's going to be on something called Pop History moving forward, just here and there. He's getting paid in gum... But it doesn't matter. That's awesome that. for him. Up for, to, that, be a, to be a history teacher yeah. 
and have a passion for entertainment and history. Yeah. And to be a talking head on a history show. Oh, and I love that. Shit. You know, him, I watch bro. it all the time. So I'm like, yo, dude, I'm, I'm going to be seeing you because I watch History Channel all the time. And at first it dawned on me like, oh, wow, that's weird. And then I, I remembered, oh, no, but Sammy's good at that stuff. So, yeah, that's perfect. After having studied them myself to there he is. showcase to my students that they were just normal human beings who made mistakes, who were flawed. I like to teach them that side of uh, those revolutionary so figures to remove sort of that headphones. sheen of godliness. I like it. You sound like a cool teacher. And with that, she's the self-proclaimed. So he's going to pop history. Awesome. Oh, and history's mysteries oh, or something. Lord. Oh, with zero points. Oh, you got points. So I'm he's going to be making that a few chick, different cameos. Chick. And I love History Channel, so I'm happy for Where's him. Who's that chick? Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh. Ah. Hey. What's up? I feel like I saw something that makes this all tie together, Spot, but you're never going to find it. I saw it today. I saw Russell Wilson doing a like a commencement speech. Yeah, oh, can you answer this question? What's the question? How old was Abraham Lincoln when he took office as president in 1861? Do you know that? He was our, young. Our daily Abe Lincoln mention of the day. Um, he was young because they said his his years as presidency, it, it aged him more than any uh, other president I'm going to say ever. Abe Lincoln was 51. No, I think well, he I don't was know the younger. answer, so I have say, to, we have to watch it to see. Let's say, how Enjoy old was Abe Lincoln? 44. I'm going to say 45. 45. Nice guess. Let's see what Isaac chooses. Isaac, your turn. I'm going to say 52. 51. And the winner of the tie-breaking round is Isaac. Isaac, you got it. You actually got it right on the money. Wow. It was 52. Oh. Damn. Oh. Dang. Wow. Who's this chair? Well, there you go. There you have it. That's the update, and it all ties together. Boom. I knew it wasn't 40-something because the youngest president ever was JFK and Clinton, oh, yeah. and they were in their 40s. No, not many 40-something-year-old presidents. I remember that. I was quite young. Well, anyway, something I had I, a I sex feel, drive. I, I saw <laughs> Russell Wilson doing a commencement speech for some university or something. I forget what it was, but it was awesome. And he goes on this whole rant that sort of ties this all together. And I wish I could put it into words. So I'll put it into dance moves. He was like this, and then he's like this, and then he's like that. No, so what was the what was the it gist? Was, it you was don't need to the find lines it. Of like saying someone has potential just means they haven't done it yet. It was about doing. Dude. It was about doing and not worrying about what other people are doing, worrying about what you're doing. You know, and, oh man, he had potential. What is potential? Potential means you you haven't done it yet. You gotta yeah. do it. You gotta get things done. Yeah. Potential. Potential. Potential's a great thing, but it doesn't mean Jack Diddley squat if you're not doing anything with it. So Sammy J had lots of potential. He's doing stuff again. Happy for him. We, Cavino and Rich, got a lot of potential. I'll tell you this. I'm not content with the status quo. Hell no. So <laughs> hoping this manifests some bigger things for manifest. us and for you. Yeah, manifest. Not manifest. Bro. Manifest. That's bro. what we're going this summer. Manifest. Yeah, bro. I can't wait. Manifest. Um, I, ha I have so many things I want to get to today. So you tell me. Let's and, go. And then. Uh, manifest. I have, a, I, have a, I have a great relatable question that I think every grown man could relate to. It has to do with style. I have a question that I thought about when I was. High on edibles. Oh, and it has to do with your family's lineage. Oh, I love genealogy. Love um, I want to talk about my new hobby. I have a new hobby. Is it genealogy? No. Um, I will tell you my mom update. I thought about it. And as long as people aren't bird brains, I'll share a little personal update on my life. Can't guarantee anything. And yeah, there's a lot of news alerts that we'll get to. But um, I think I want to start with my new hobby because it's a quickie. Quickie. I don't know why I get such a kick out of this, but I guess over the years, are you on different Facebook groups or none at all? No, yeah, are sure. you, are you on like any, like, yo rock? I'm on, I'm on ours and that's the only one okay, I check. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's I'm on them, but I don't ever search them. No, but I'm saying like, I'm not saying I'm part of all these groups and I'm like this fucking social media troll. I'm saying, I don't oh, like it. It might be like, people are too dumb. There might be like five message boards. I'm on. I know I'm on a, a radio one people where it's so dumb. Can I tell you, I got a haircut yesterday. People are How dumb so are they? Dumb that I just have to back out. Like I can't participate because I'm gonna get angry and I'm gonna come across like arrogant. You hear people talking in the barber shop and you're like, dumb, dumb, dumb. <laughs> consider that a Facebook group, right? Here I am at the barber shop <laughs> and this guy's talking to me about the Lakers or something like that. 
And I'm like, yeah, are you watching Winning Time? It all ties together. Winning. John C. Riley, yeah, Will Farrell, he was playing the John C. Riley plays Jerry Buss. Nah, yo, I haven't seen that, man. I heard it's good though. But I'm watching Shaq's Life. Whatever. What's it called mm -hmm. on HBO Max? Shaq's Life. Life of Shaq. Shaq's house. I forget what it's called. Oh, cool, man. He's like, I'm gonna put that shit on. I've been meaning to watch it. So I'm I'm there at the barber shop, yeah. and there's a scene where they are talking about Magic Johnson. And then it cuts real quick to Magic Johnson at his house. And his mom's like, don't you be calling him that in this house. I ain't calling him by that stupid nickname in this house. In this house, he's Irvin Johnson. Right? Yeah. Kid's like, yo, for real? I thought his name was Magic Johnson. I can see a young kid Come thinking on, that dumb shit. bro. That's why I swear. I thought Irvin his, Magic I Johnson. Thought his whole I know. Night, my whole life, I thought his real name was Magic. I didn't know his name was Irvin Johnson. And the other people were like, come on, bro. And I'm just there like, this guy's a fucking it numbskull. It's like right? how the, the world now realizes that it's Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> no, I, it's I, not, I, no, I thought his name was Magic. And he's like, yo, it's before my day, Holmes. And I'm like, before your day? What the fuck? It's there's, Magic Johnson. You thought his name was Magic Johnson? There's so many people with nicknames that bro, you think it's their real name. Come on. Like Whoopi Goldberg. He's Is a that legend, her name? dude. Yeah, but I don't know Whoopi Goldberg's real name. Karen. I do. Karen. Oh, Karen, Karen Goldberg? It is Karen something. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying, like, sometimes people's names are more iconic than their actual name. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, oh, but oh. this guy, it never dawned on him that his name was Irvin Magic Johnson. I, I have you're, a gonna, question. you're from LA, you're a Lakers guy, and you don't realize that? Fuck out of here. I don't care how old you are. Well, I have a question for you, Bird Brain. Yeah. Hey. Fuck out of here. Magic hey. Johnson, dude. He's one, He's a legend. Her name's Karen Johnson? Oh. Whoopi? Karen Johnson. Karen Johnson. Karen is her name. Did you see the meme I posted the other day? Her name's Karen Elaine Johnson. Karen Are you Johnson? serious? Yes. Karen Johnson. <laughs> Karen Johnson. <laughs> Karen Johnson. Uh, my favorite meme I posted the, the other day. It's ironic that the angriest people on television are named Whoopi, Sonny, and Joy. I saw that. Anyway, I digest Whoa. my morning breakfast. I'm going to bring it up because I'm not in any Facebook groups because well, all I see is fool's talk. Do you want to... Uh, so I'm trying to be polite. Do you want fool's to... Talk, uh, fool's talk. I'll just step out. Do you want to say, yo, Rich, the more I think about it, you're right, because when I always tell you, the average idiot doesn't know what you know. You might not be some scholar that knows all historical facts, but I constantly tell you, Kavino, you are in the 1% of common pop culture, sports, entertainment, history. Like, most people are dumb. That's it's, why. It's not even that. How do you not it's see like this? common sense. Like, all right, then guess what? People lack common sense. All right. It's not even about pop culture. So when I bring up something. It's like it didn't even dawn on this guy that maybe his name wasn't magic. When I bring up something. And you're like, yo, bro, everyone knows that. I'm like, I promise you. I promise you. Yo, Holmes, that was before my dying. No one knows that. I'll give you one. I oh, saw like, Oh, Babe Ruth. I thought his name was Babe. That's like me saying, oh, I thought his name was Babe. No, you George numbskull. George Herman Ruth. No, numbskull. You numbskull. Wait, it wasn't Babe? <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you one that I saw today. And I was like, yo, people oh, don't. Wait, wait. It's not Babe. That's before my dying. I thought it was Babe. But I thought his mom was like, yo, it's a Babe. It's I call it Babe. Before my time is not an excuse for you being an idiot. So that's why, uh, to answer the question, that's why I'm not in any Facebook groups. Because I don't want to be the arrogant douche. Uh, Whoopi who is such knows a, a lot about nothing important. <laughs> Whoopi is such a Karen. All right. Um, I, I saw this yesterday because they were talking about how Hayden Panettiere. Yo, why are you Hayden? Wow. Was, There's a name I haven't heard in a minute. Was uh, this must be Klitschko involved? Raising a ton of resources and money for Ukraine because of her ex-husband and the father of her seven-year-old, Vladimir Klitschko. And man, he must have destroyed that. Oh my! You ever see a picture of them side by side? Yeah. It's like how on earth did you. she handle that? Not to sound perverted, but I will break you. But I picture her like I, I picture her going up to her neck. You will lose. <laughs> like how? On, it's insane seeing Klitschko and her I and all the comments you. were like, what does she have to do with Klitschko or Ukraine? I'm like, You're like I, I'm telling you, people don't know common knowledge, which is why I constantly say the obvious at times. Because, I will destroy you. Yeah, look at them together. You will lose. You look will lose. Your, look at that right there. You will lose your uh, uh, Kegel. You will, you, you will lose your insights. <laughs> you will lose your intestines. <laughs> you will lose any hope of... Uh, Walking. walking, you will not walk for weeks. You will lose Kegel function. <laughs> you will lose <laughs> elasticity. You, <laughs> you. 
So <laughs> we're showing a picture if you're not watching uh, on of, the on tier two. It's a, they look ridiculous side by side. Look, if you're, if you're on tier one, Hayden Panettiere, when you're at a red light or you're stopped and you're not driving around Google image, Klitschko and Hayden Panettiere together. And it really is like that picture. You ever see that picture of Shaq with a girl he dated? And it's like, yo, she's up to his Johnson. <laughs> his Irvin Johnson. Yo, his name is Irvin? Um, Before my time, you bro. Will, you will lose any hope of another man satisfying you. Man. <laughs> you can't even fit them both in the photo. I know. He's a beast. <laughs> he is a fucking beast, Adon. Uh, Honestly, that's why in real life, guys, truthfully, you may think, what an arrogant douche Cavino could be on the radio. On the radio? On the radio. Hey, man, look at me rocking out. I'm on the uh, radio. radio. I'm on the radio with Dickie and Spotty, but in real life, I, I take a back seat. Here's the microphone. It's yours. I'm not playing. Yo, but you know why? In, in real life, I'm reserved. I get it. It doesn't mean I don't have opinions. It's just I don't want to get into it. You're a smart guy that knows a lot. Same with Spot. Mm, I don't even want we, that credit. We, we, no, but I'm saying we have, have, we have, we have listeners and, and supporters think. that are pretty bright people. Common knowledge. But when I tell you. Which show are you listening when to? When I tell you, Spot, you, you could say, oh, bro, you, you I don't know. <sighs> Not to be insulting, but when I'm around, let's say, mixed company, let's say I'm playing softball, I tell stories or drop fun facts with some of these guys, and I look like I am Neil deGrasse Tyson. Like, I will, I'll throw out something that I thought was a common knowledge fun fact or about a, like, guys will have their little, uh, you know, the portable speaker, and like a song will come on. I'm like, yo, do you know this band? And they're like, Yo, for real? Like, no one knows a thing. Right, again, I don't want to throw fucking low blows, but there's a person I work with at Sirius XM mm -hmm. who's the dumbest. You, like, I, I come across as, like, this guy. I was referred to one time. I found out years later that the guy used to refer to me as a doorknob, and I never understood what that meant because I'm dumb. I admit I'm dumb sometimes. Why am I a doorknob? Because he's as dumb as a doorknob, I guess. I... I guess that was the reference, but I found out years later the that guy would say that about me. Dumb as a doornail. Do doorknob is what the reference was. I was like, okay, I guess I'm a doorknob. I'll show you what a doorknob I am. You're a knob. So I now see people and I'm like, man, they are fucking dumb. But I keep it to myself. I'm telling you. Yeah. In no, but I, I'm, I'm not saying they're. I'm not saying they're dumb. It's just, man, I will, I no. Will, some people. I will I'm drop not facts. the brightest bulb. I don't want to ever claim that I am. But man, because I, I know that people assume these things about me. But I'm telling you, if I see, if if think whatever you want about me, right? But if I could see that, man, they're stupid. Then they must be really stupid. I was. I, oh, God, sorry. I'm, I'm a, uh, let's say the guys are playing music. At our Saturday softball game, right there, little speaker. Let's say Kanye comes on. Kanye. Just small talk, talking to the guys. I'm like, yo, anyone watching the Kanye documentary? Can I watched the first episode. Yo, pretty dope. My buddy Cavino says it's fantastic. I love Kanye. I didn't even know there was a documentary. How the fuck do you not know there's a but like things People, like yeah, they don't live our lives. I know, but what I I'm saying that. is, when, so, so when I bring crazy. up when I bring I was, up things that you think are common, you're like, yo, bro, what do you think? I'm dumb. Trust me. Most people are wrapped up in their own world, their own life, their own career, their own business, their own hustles. That I'll say something their like their own interests. I'll I say was, I'll uh, say some shit spot that is so to me common knowledge, and people will say, "No, I never heard that." So the I, end. I was at a uh, physical therapy on Monday, and I was doing like my hip thrusts where I thrust my cock into the air, mm -hmm. and Mariah Carey came on. It was Honey, you know the song Honey mm -hmm. by Mariah Carey. So the it was like a younger a younger kid that was leading my my PT. And I'm like, oh, this song, ugh. And he's like, oh, you like this song? I'm like, no, I'm like, the, you know, this was Mariah Carey's first song after she, uh, like when she was liberated, after she broke up from her husband. She was with her husband for most of the 90s. And she, after the fantasy, I was just like going on this whole dissertation about Mariah Carey. I'm like, oh, you know, she had a number one hit in every decade. And, every the, kid, year. and the kid's and like, the kid's like, she has the one Christmas song, right? And the kid, like, he's <laughs> like, he's like, oh, I was, uh, he was like, I was, I was uh, five in, two th in the year 2000. Before my time, like, Holes. Before my time, Before is Before my he? time, is uh, well, anyway, everyone's uh, smart and dumb. Yeah, we love you guys. She used to be married to Nick Cannon, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's, he, that's what he probably do. That's it. Yeah. But and we, I'm sure we everyone, are viewed yeah, everyone that lives, way everyone by lives, somebody. Um, that's why I brought it up. It's everyone like, lives a different life. There's no, so much I random get shit. <laughs> I random. get it. And, but but then again, you know what? You know what? I feel like 
we I know too much though. We listen, the same way we learn a lot from our listeners and our friends and supporters. Whether they want to admit it or not, they learn a lot of these little dumb things from us because like Rolando saying, yo, I didn't know about the Kanye documentary, but he heard it from us and now he knows it. You get know what I'm saying? Like people get that's why everyone's like Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan. There are certain guys and shows that people will listen to or watch, and that's sort of their lifeline to tidbits and fun facts and relevance. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you see how that can be dangerous? But trust me, okay. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, yeah, I'm I humble often. often. You know, Sammy J gets the gig. At least we're lighthearted and fun. Yeah. <laughs> every day, Jordan every day Jordan asks me questions that I don't know the answer to. Oh, yeah, I, don't know it, that. I thought it was. I don't know that shit. I'm keeping it real. I thought it was usually like sports rules that. No, like, you're she'll like, ask I don't me know why they exist. Like, yeah, she'll she'll ask me questions, assuming I know the answer. I'm like, I don't know that. How would I know that? So again, it like what? <laughs> I'd love to know an example. I, I'm gonna have to make notes of it. Yeah. I really because it should do. be a bit. I'm like, who knows that? Nobody knows that. So I will start making a list. But every day I'm humbled. But my point is, my point is. Let's say I'm a self-centered guy. Let's right? say. And I have the ability Rich. to recognize that like Mark Zito is more self-centered than me. Holy shit. He must be the worst. <laughs> okay. Can yeah. you sit so deep and pretend there could be no self-centered? If, if I'm claiming to be, I'm not the smartest guy, but I know oh. a lot of dumb things. Man. And I have the ability to see how dumb everybody else is. God, everybody should be ashamed. That's my point. That's well, my point. Hey. I'm not claiming to be leaping yeah. Lanny Poffo. I'm just saying that most people are, are infuriating with their lack of knowledge, yet they're the most outspoken, and it drives me berserk, and that's why I don't participate in these Facebook groups. That's how we got here. I don't, I don't participate in that. I, I participate in ours because I'm a self-centered guy who just wants to read about himself. Bingo! That's really it. Was his name? Oh, yeah. B I N G O. I hear that shit all day. By the way, bingo still very popular in the kid nursery rhyme game. Know what I realized? Uh, you know how we talked about uh, crisscross applesauce replaced Indian style? Yeah. Certain things adjust over the years. The if way, you were to say, if you were to have a race with me, you know it's crazy. According to the genius rankings, you are no leaping Lenny Poffo. <laughs> <laughs> but you're up there. I'm up yeah. there, though. We're right below Lenny Poffo. Uh, uh, we're above you, Spot, <laughs> Bill Nye, Michio Kaku, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, yeah. and Bill Nye. That's great. Thanks. Spot, can you put that on uh, our social media today? Put that on Instagram. Sure. Post that picture. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's people's lack of common knowledge. I don't know anything important, so I don't want to come here like acting like yeah, I'm, no, it's, it's I'm just, uh, Neil, Neil to ask but, but, but I made this point the other day with that. Smarter. I made that point the other day, Kavino, with the, uh, that Jeopardy deep thought that, I mean, everyone's got their own set of knowledge. Like who's to say one's more important than the other. Yo, yeah, Holmes, you know why they're called the, uh, the LA Lakers? Yo, I don't know. I see. Never thought about it. Oh, hold on. Spot. Wait, wait, hold on. Before my time. Time out. That's not an excuse. You Spot. fucking mother. Spot. Why are they called the Los Angeles Lakers? Do you know? Uh, were they moved from an area near a lake? Oh, well, keep going. Ah, keep going. Out. Keep You're going. You nailed uh, it. They were originally from Michigan. No. Minneapolis. D Minneapolis. Yeah. Minneapolis you, Lakers. You know why? You use your common sense. It Spot. doesn't make you. It doesn't make you smart. So I'm not trying to claim Do you brilliance. Know, Kristen, who's from the town of Long Lake, they were the Lakers. See, because they're in Long Lake. Ta -da! You use deductive reasoning. Uh, All right, real quick before I tell you my new hobby. Oh, tell me about the Facebook groups. Oh yeah, I am. That's oh, my okay. new hobby. I have, a, I, have a, I have. So that's why. Lo that's a long answer. The long answer as to why I'm not really a, a great participant in these sort of group settings. A simple yes would have. <laughs> simple no would have been okay. And I had to give you my example from the barbershop. <laughs> But if I asked, if I said, Kavino, let's have a race. How would you say? Ready? Come on. Let's, let's, what would you say? Ready, set, go. Every little kid, because of that damn Peppa Pig who looks like a penis. Ready, steady, go. Ready, steady, go. Like every time Emmy's like, all right, dad, let's race. I'm like, all right, Emmy, let's go. It's also Ready? a song. I'm like, steady? Ready, Ready, steady, go? It's a, it's an English thing. I'm pretty sure. Ready, steady. Yeah. Because Peppa Pig. Steady. Go. There's a, you know, when I used to be a producer and host with DJ Liquid Todd on the ones and twos. We used to play a song from a British artist. I forget who it was called Ready Steady Go. Yeah, it but might have been Fatboy Slim or something. Ready 
I'm like, set. She's like, no. Emmy's like, no, not set, dad. Ready, steady, go. I'm like, ready, steady, go. Ready, steady, go. Peppa Let's Pig. see. There's a Paul Oakenfeld song. There it is. There it is, Paul. Ready, steady, go. Paul Oakenfeld made quite a living, but he was the main guy before dance and EDM type of music blew up. Like guys like him and Liquid Todd, you know. Yeah, Paul Oakenfeld was the G. I remember being in Miami with Rich and he was just there on the street. Like, yo, Paul Oakenfold, what's up? We took a picture. Right, right, right. Of course I do. <laughs> Ready, steady, go. Yeah, have a pick. Ready, steady. Yeah, like spot, the Utah Jazz. Is there anything jazzy about the fucking Mormon state of Utah? New Orleans. No. I usually say ready, Freddy, go. I usually ready, say ready, Freddy. Fat Five Freddy. Ready, Freddy. Freddy. So go. my new hobby, and it's not a hobby. I probably spend literally five minutes a day doing this, but I all I feel like I get such joy in calling out people on this baseball fan group I'm part of. I think it's like a there's like fifty thousand people in this group. It's like a baseball, mostly East Coast baseball fans. And Everyone oh, is must this be great. righteous asshole. Like you don't say. Let me. Oh, guess. it's billionaires versus millionaires. They all suck. Don't change the game. The game is great the way it is. You're ruining baseball. And I love to go in there and just drop a little bomb on these like old people because they're all older people. Like baseball's perfect. Why change it a bit? Yeah, they're gonna think you're you think you're like a young foofy guy. Oh, and I do it on purpose. I don't care. I'm like, I, I I told you the other day on Fox Sports. I didn't realize I was arguing with an 80 year old lady. Mm. Then yesterday, some like 60 year old guy, like our parents age, maybe like 60 or 70, just went on this whole rant about how, you know, one of the things they did in baseball was they're changing the size of the bases. Did you see this? I didn't actually know spot. Look up the, the picture. It's I'm not, it's not a joke or anything and it's for player safety. Oh, I know. So they're harder to steal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> ah! And they're I heavy know, too. I like, know where to fit it. They're a couple inches bigger. And I, I got it. Is they it like stayed, softball where it's extended? So no, they no, no, no. The they path? changed the size of the bases starting in 2023. And truthfully, no one on earth would have noticed or cared mm. that they, they moved, they made the bases like three or four inches bigger, but I'm actually trolling these people. Like they're like changing the size of the bases. Another way they're ruining the game. I'm like, so a safety measure that you would never have noticed is ruining the game. Let me, let me let you know. And I like to tell these people, you may, yeah, like that's the new bases are going to be bigger. Wow. Just for a safety precaution. I bet you it's it's noticeable when you look at it. I bet you we won't you don't even think notice. It, it's more prominent? I don't know. It's pretty big. It's kind of big. It's really big. I mean, it doesn't change how I feel about anything. I'm not all. watching baseball anymore. But They're I, changing the game. I think I would have noticed, though. Look at the, so the <laughs> inner, see this? The inner square yeah. is about the same size as the uh, the full size of this. But so who's losing sleep over it's that? It's got a whole extra, what, like inch around the yeah. outside? Yeah. And, and, and no one has an answer for me when I say, hey, listen. And I, I, I always start out respectfully. I'm like, hey, respectfully, how old are you? 60, 70 years old? Baseball is losing young fans. Like, yo, I may, I'm a 40-year-old guy. I may like baseball the way it is, but you think 162-game schedule, three four-hour games, no pitch clock, a small number of teams make the playoffs. You think baseball is going to survive the way it is? No excitement. You need to encourage bat flips. You need to encourage feuds and rivalries. And you need to make the game fun. And these people are like, no, oh, keep the game the way it is. It's classic. And I'm like, yo, classic equals dying. And I, I realize that sort of being a troll on this baseball fan page gives me slight joy. So anyone that trolls me, maybe I have a little more respect for you now. Because it's fun. Because I'm not malicious at all. I, actually, I'm very respectful. But you should see these people get so mad. Some guys like, "Who invited you here? Get the fuck out of here!" I'm like, "Who invited me? Who invited you?" I can't believe. Hey, look at you. You so opinionated. Fuck out of here. So there's been 162 games since 1962. Prior to that, it was 154 games. Yeah, that's the controversy with Babe Ruth and Roger Maris. 1919, it was yeah. 140 games. If you go way, way back in 1883, it was 98 games. And in the first season, they're not going to go 70 games. They're not going to go backwards. They're not going to go backwards spot because of revenue and each game. Think of each game alone. Each game alone is 20, 20, 30, 40,000 seats. Who's game alone? In 2020, do you feel like you Don't were shortchanged? Don't say game, Florida. What? In 2020, you feel like you were shortchanged? 
Because no, there were only no, 60 but, games. No, I, yeah, that was a little too, that I was know. too little. But my point spot is. I mean, that's even 100. My, yeah, but that's even too little because now you're talking about six, 132. 140. Yeah. 132. 132. 120. 100, I like it. 120. I, but each game spot, tell me more about Game Alone. Posts uh, cousin. Game Alone is posts. Well, every, in the closet. Every cousin, game yes. alone is about four hours too. Four hours. Oh, he's an, an oh, he's unmanageable be, three and a half hours. He's the new character in the Cheers reboot. Thirty thousand, yeah, thirty thousand ticket sales, beer, soda, refreshments, jersey sales, hot dogs. So I get it. They're never going to cut the schedule because hot dogs. It just game alone. It, it just game alone loves hot dogs. The footlong. <laughs> he loves Dodger dogs. He loves footlongs. But you do realize that Beef. they're they're never going to cut it. But there has to be a way to make baseball exciting for a younger person. And when they're making these changes, like, hey, we're going to do a playoff where the high seed gets to pick who they're playing, or let's encourage bat flips and pointing and rivalries. Like, what can you do to make young people embrace this game? Because if you think in 10, 20 years, 162 four-hour games with no personality, with an old-school tradition is going to survive, know what I say to that? Hey. <laughs> I was waiting to see what you said about that. It's like what uh, Ken Griffey said. You know, let the kids play, man, and let them be who they are. Let them play. Do you think let if I show both, let them show, I want to see him. Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. You know what? Hit home runs. Kavino, you, I have a question. You, you made the best point. Kavino made the best point that the NBA season that felt, the, felt right was oh, the yeah. one that was starting at Christmas, and it was like 20 games less. Because I was invested, you know. From day one. From day one. <laughs> um. Do you think these change? You know how, like the past years or two, that there's been so many home run hitters, like people have just been hitting bombs, just based on changes. Yeah. Do you think all these changes are going to start to like really affect the game? Like, uh, there's one effect. There's one change that's going to affect like the bigger, game spot, ba- like bigger bases. No spot. Why, the, the, can't the, you get nah, that that might bases. it might help like one one fast guy steal a couple well, more bases because he has four inches haste? closer on a bang bang play. Four inches is a lot. That's yeah. what she said. Four inches. One last thought spot. Four inches, like this, this much. This is four yeah, inches. Yeah, four. That's four inches. Yeah, four that's inches. A that's a lot, man. Four inches. Four inches. That looks like fourteen inches, Bob. No, four inches. This is I think four your inches. measurements off. No, this is how I know four inches. But my my thought, Cove, is I measured it. While there's going to be more home runs hit, and there's going to be hopefully more action in baseball, I mean, them having no shift anymore. That's weird. Is such an advantage to the batter because there's there's pitchers that know how to deal to some of these guys that are straight up pull hitters. So I ask you, being that you're a, a my feelings a on big the time baseball changed. guy, because when I they shifted when they first started to yeah. utilize the shift, yeah, I was infuriated. I was like, "What is this horse shit?" But there was no rules against it, so you're like, "Oh, well, I guess it's smart." Right, you just shift the players to the side of the field these batters hit toward. Best known, Jason Giambi, would 99% of the time pull the ball to the right side. So, so what's the point of, well, yeah. the right side. What's the point of having two infielders on the left side of the diamond when you know for a fact Giambi's not poking the ball the other way? So it became the Giambi shift. and So I got so mad yeah. about that shit for so long. But I'm such a fan that I yeah. just eventually got used to it as a part of the game. Baseball needs to speed up. They need to evolve with the times. And anyone that doesn't think that, I'm a big baseball guy. And I realize that as much as I love baseball, you need more teams in the postseason. You need a shorter schedule. You need quicker games. If you told me, you know what would make people's heads spin off? If you said seven inning games. I'm all for it. I'll tell you why. Starting pitchers only go five or six anyway. So five or six innings for your starter. Bullpen, game over. A two and a half, three hour game. People would never go for it, but in my your, mind, your like boy, your dad's boy, Michael K. Yeah. Ends every game with and the Yankees win seven to two in an unmanageable three three hours and forty five minutes. Unmanageable. Game. He, every game he says, an unmanageable yep. three hour plus game. Banning the shift is stupid. That's what David says. Now, I, I think it's stupid because it's a strategy, but well, it's become such a part of the game now. I just think it's a... Uh, you know what they want? They want more offense. And what you're doing is, if you got some lefty slugger, you're taking you're taking doubles out of his arsenal. Yeah, but remember, arsenal. the game is was designed to have you know nine players out there 
in each designated position. So you're sort of like just changing the game because there was no rule against it. I like the crazy rules. Like there was a rule that was introduced that they were thinking about where the best teams got to buy in the playoffs. But then the teams that made it as a wild card, the best one gets to choose spot who they play. You're trying to tell me that's not a cool rivalry like that that will generate trash talk like all right the uh the Braves get to choose. I will the Braves choose that they want to play the Brewers. You know and all of a sudden the Brewers are like, "Oh, you chose us? Well, fuck you then." Like you know, you know it would be a cool rule if you like strike out the the catcher gets to smack you in the face. <laughs> I like that. Oh, I would yeah. watch. Imagine yeah. you would never want to strike out. Get younger people involved. Like not like like you know, not like well, you know, like actually strike out, like swing and miss three so, times. Anyway, my, yeah. my new my you new hobby is uh, like, ah, my new, oh. my new hobby is is busting the balls of boomers on baseball Facebook pages because Such a troll because they uh, you're trolling now, huh? I, so you're you're like wait, no, you're I'm, years not, behind. I'm not rude. I'm not rude, and I'm not hiding behind anything. I'm like, hey, I'm Rich Davis. Here's me. I'm not. I'm not. No fake name. You're like no the bullshit. Andrew Hart of this MLB group. I am, uh, but I I can't believe how older people don't understand. That it's not all about them, and I think that's what gives me, you know, gives me some uh, some laughers. Is that these people are like the game's great the way it is, and you're like, no, it's not all about you, seventy year old guy. You see your grandkid or your son or your daughter. You think they care about one hundred and sixty two games? Ta da! The end. They don't care about baseball, and it's like you know, baseball has to evolve, but baseball will die in the next twenty five years if it stays the same. So every time they propose these new rules, and all the stubborn jerk offs are like, "Oh, they're ruining it." No, they're not ruining it. They're making it better. By the way, I love baseball, man. Rich and I went on a little rant. I think it was on the air. I forget. Life's a little blurry sometimes. Love is blurry sometimes. Love is blind. Love is blurry. Okay, shake. I have dreams that I was in the big leagues. <laughs> Did we talk about that on the air? Everyone yeah. does. I wake up and I'm like, oh man, did that happen? Yeah, I'm no, not in the big didn't. leagues. It never happened. But it feels so good. It feels so real sometimes. So anyway, that's Rich Davis. I'm Steve Cabino. I'm Rich Davis. Spots over there in his cabin. And we appreciate you guys so much because you're part of something that Close we theater. feel helps all of us, including us. Yeah. You guys make me more well-rounded. I feel like this show yeah. makes all of us... Hey, so I, 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 so I did those Girl Scout cookies uh, oh, yeah. that were oh, sent uh, to us. Not only that, we had Girl Scout cookies. Thank you guys again. And thank you, Heidi, for all your kindness. But Jordan made cake yesterday, too. And my yeah, God, how could I resist Jordan's cake? She got two big juicy Unintended. cakes. Unintended. By the ocean? So, hey, Rich, speaking of uh, all the Girl Scout cookies people are mailing us, yeah. quick little break. Something we call mail time. Oh, yeah, we got some. We got like lots of mm, packages. Mm. And by the way, while you get those packages going, I want to say what's up to Glenn Benton. Glenn hit us up saying he listens. He's never. He's not a. He's not a, a big chatter on social media, but he hit me up saying thanks for the recommendation on Bel Air. He's loving it, and he's like yeah, yellow. He's like that. yellow jackets. Thanks for the recommendation on that too. But how about Yellowstone? Um, so good. Yeah, come on. Here's the mail, it never fails It makes me want to wag my tail When it comes, I want to wail Thanks, Blue's Clues. Blue's I like Blue's. that one, Spot, thank you. I know you do. Uh, this is from do it just for you. Susan Wong. Not the TV star, right? She died. Oh, yeah, that's right. But she Not was a from friend her. Of ours. She was a friend of ours, though, remember that? I do, but she died. I remember she, she died. Can't, she had cancer. Uh, first of all, huge congratulations on one year at Patreon. Thank you, Suzanne. Oh. Suzanne or Susan? Susan, right? You want to read it? Yeah. Suzanne has a Z and two N's and an E. I got to say, she used a very nice font. Let me see. Show Beautiful me. letter. I don't know, what would you call that? What, what font is that? Oh, I don't know. I have to zoom in. Oh, I thought she like wrote. No. Uh, first of all, like you said, huge congrats. I'm, I'm such a big oh, fan. I'm, doing, I'm seeing what's inside. I'm doing the Christian Bale like... Dibs. Yeah, you know the whole I'm probably whole. not your typical listener. There is no typical listener. There is no typical listener. I'm a 57 year old woman, Love her. happily married over 30 years. Congratulations. Oh. That's very sweet, Suzanne. It's Suzanne. There's an E at the end. How do you know it's not Suzanne? Stop it. Maybe it's Suzanne Wong. Stop it, Suzanne. Stop it. Susan Susan O. Susan ha ha. I have two college educated and employed children in their twenties. I wow. listen to you two on my tier two subscription as I conduct a very awesome. successful home based business for many years. Oh. Oh, look at that. Yes, home based even prior to the pandemic. So this is like an amazing fifty seven year old woman. Stop two, it. Two successful kids. 
running biz, big business. And big she's business. like, and she's like, I love you two idiots. <laughs> I love you, Suzanne, especially after seeing his gift. I'm pumped. You like, both I, make me laugh every day. And for that, I thank you dearly. Yeah, oh, that's so nice. Suzanne. Of you. I'm so Su- Suzanne E. Suzanne A. Suzanne Ho. Suzanne A. I found these fun and very flavorful barbecue items. Right, Bro, hook, hook it up. I am in the market for some bull bam barbecue sauce. I heard Cavino play Guns N' Roses on Turbo countless times, so I hope this is fitting. Enjoy Suzanne E. Whoa, oh, from sweet Wheaton. Sauce whoa, of mine. Whoa, sweet sauce of mine. She is from Wheaton, Illinois, a suburb Lamberts. of Chi-Town, 30 Check miles west. So. Suzanne, so dope, and I gotta tell you, I need a new barbecue sauce, so I'm super stoked. Gonna be rocking this tonight. Sweet oh. sauce of mine. Lambert, sweet sauce of mine. Sounds good. Original barbecue. And get oh, this. Oh, Suzanne Wong. Sweet rub of mine. Oh, nice. Get one or the other. No, hold on. There's, there's, there's plenty there's for plenty. us. Dibs on everything. There. Yeah, buddy. Check this out. That was nice. Nice. Boy. There you go, Rich. Look at that. Love it. Thank you, Suzanne. Hey, Spot, do you want so my nice. sauce or do you want my rubbins? I'll, t- I'll take whatever you don't want. Cool. Ooh. Thank you. I'm super stoked. Lambert. Lambert. Sweet rub of mine. Check this out. Oh, Yo. this is from, again, Heidi. What did she again? hit the lottery? Heidi. She sent more stuff? Heidi Nakama. Who Please sent stop. Us all those beautiful gifts for Please our daughters. stop. She sent on us On International the... Women's Day. On International Women's Day. Thank you, Heidi. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm correlating something here. Didn't she send us the snacks, I don't, I don't wanna too? Be pres- I don't want to be presumptuous, Spot, but hold on. Who's, what's Heidi's last name? Nakama. A comma. And this is from comma. this is from Suzanne Wong. Are are we hot in like the female Asian community? I think so. It must be me. Like it might be no, no, Asian. No, I mean I might be like the like their white boy guy. Like no, I don't think that's it. Nah. Kevin on Rich, the number one show of Vatos Locos and Asian women. This is for Sarah and Kristen for International Women's Day. Oh, what? So what? Here you oh, go. Look. I mean, cheese. Nurture could- by nature. Wasn't that your favorite hip hop group in the nineties? It was <laughs> Nurture by Nature. Botanicals, time to relax, like a relax. Pack it up, pack what? it in. And here's, I guess, this oh. one's for for Jordan. Heidi. Yep. So unnecessary, Jordan. yet so uh, so appreciated. So and nice. Note. Yeah. Oh, Happy Heidi. International Women's Day from Heidi. What the fudge? So nice. I mean, just so what the unnecessarily sweet yet appreciated. You didn't have to do that, but I'm glad you did. Oh. I'm glad you did. I see, Heidi. A, I see a theme, though. Heidi appreciates the women in our lives. Heidi yeah. and Suzanne. So, that's very sweet. Man. Wow. No, Kevin, I won't give Heidi your address. Oh, she's so Susanna, freaking thoughtful. I'm glad you bought my sauce. I'm glad oh, you bought my sauce mom. and sauce. And yeah, uh-huh, Heidi's my up? cash cow. Stay away. She's my sugar mama. Man. Oh, <laughs> Susanna, I love my sweet rub. Yeah. I love my sweet rub. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's what's up. Yeah. Huh? Thank you. Man. Susanna and Heidi bringing the heat. There's what? Oh. Is there one? No. Oh, those were the two the same. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, hey, guys, thank you. So nice. Unnecessary, but appreciate it and love it. You guys are the best. Unnecessary, right. but I'm Can still going to put something? up the address. Just Can I go case. on my rant? A, a baby rant. It's a baby rant. Because I don't want to sound go, like go, go. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a broken record. You ever do that shit, by the way, when your kid, I mean, your daughter's 12 now. But yeah, I say, go, 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 no, no. When, 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 uh, do you remember when she was uh, Emmy's age, like four or five, when they do some kitty shit? I'm always like, well, if you're going to act like a baby, all right, Emmy, I'll, you want me, to, want me to get a diaper for you? You're going to pacify her? It's like, no, I'm like, I think you're a baby. I'm not a baby, dad. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get you a diaper. Like, I'd, then you realize that my daughter is. Kids are kids when it's convenient yo, for she them is, to be a kid. But yeah. then, you know, Melody acts like she's grown up and she's an adult mm-hmm. most of the time. But then when, when it's convenient, she's just a kid. Get no, it? It's, it's like. You know, I, I, I could talk about my kids all day. So trust me, I, I resist talking about them because I know people don't want to hear about other, other people's kids all the time. But I, I can't get enough of my daughter. I know you have the relationship with your daughter like that. That father daughter love. There's nothing like it. So any dad, because I know oh, a couple I of our, that way at four too. Uh, at 12, I get enough. Trust uh, me. A couple of our listeners I know recently had daughters. I see that and, respect. And I, and I reached out to them because to me, don't get me wrong. I love the beef ball, Ben. Him and I are starting to bond on a, on a different level. He thinks he's a dinosaur. What do you want, a cookie? He lays on me and growls. By the way, I was thinking about that the other day. Isn't it really interesting and something weird and primal 
about how a little kid could identify with this fucking thing? Yeah. How is that even possible? I have 50 dinosaur toys around the house. He thinks he's a dino. No, but isn't that like oddly insane how it's yeah. in like a little boy's DNA to like yeah. really be intrigued did, by this. Did you see that meme where it's like every little boy gravitates to one of these four things and it was like trucks, dinosaurs. Like he shits in his diaper. Yeah, like, it was like, I, think, I, I forgot the meme, but it was, it was four things. It was like trucks, dinosaurs, <laughs> Like tools or something else, and it's like every little boy gravitates. But space, the yeah space, the Ben's carpet in his room is actually dinosaurs in outer space. So can't get the more little boy than that. My daughter wants to do everything on her own now, and I'm sure you remember that stage yeah. where it's like, no, Dad, I can do it. Now Emily Melody doesn't want to do anything on her own. Yo, I try to help her put the toothpaste. I'm a butler. I, I have to. She gets new toothpaste. You know how you have to pull off that, like, the seal? Every little thing, like, I want to do it. I mean, daddy's got, uh, no, everything she wants to do. I want, dad, can I have cereal? She had a little after-school snack. All right, wait for dad. She's like, no, I can do it myself. I'm like, baby, please just wait for dad. I'll be right back. I have to go to my office. I come back. There's fruity pebbles everywhere on the counter. And she's holding a heavy gallon of milk, like, hugging it, like, and pouring it. I'm like, yo, kids just want independence so bad. When they're that age. And she's got that silly little sense of humor too. She, I, she, she calls them farty pebbles. I'm like, what do you got there? Fruity pep, farty pebbles. So oh, I, I didn't. I'm kidding. Man, it's, uh, it's crazy having a daughter. I know every dad. I'm done. I'm done uh, gushing. But every, every guy that has a daughter, there's just a different level of love, I think. I don't know what it is. It's like, you just. Uh, you should play her some Kelly Clarkson or something. They, they, fav- they become your favorite human on earth. You know, they really do. Yeah, because. They're an extension of you. Yeah. You love yourself. <laughs> but I feel like my bond with my son will be different. Like, you know, like playing sports or just being guys and, you know, like watching him become a little boy into a man. But having a daughter is like fucking melt you, bro. All right, I'm done. Go on. You don't have to be done. Nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. You can't say my shit son, like that. And my then, son is four and loves dinosaurs. Turn it over yeah. to me with my stupid story. Dan said, I have a three-year-old girl. Nothing better than those hugs. But anyone with kids knows one true statement. Kids are stupid. <laughs> kids are stupid. Uh, my son is five. This is from Kyle and thinks I'm a superhero. Melts my heart. Yeah, no, nothing makes me... Like this morning, Emmy woke up and the first thing she said was like, I love you. You're the best dad. Can you can you give me huggies and carry me to the kitchen? I was like, yeah, because I'm not going to be able to carry you forever. I was going to say, that's yeah. the sad part about yeah. it. Like I'm so past that stage and it like breaks your heart because you're like, well, what happened to that? Yeah. And... It's nothing that happens. It's just they grow up. That's all. Yeah. And no, then no, they no. become their own person and they have their own problems and moods. And and I, th- I thought of you yesterday because life, I, really. I remember you telling me that you would always go out for ice cream at Melody. Still do. When she was younger. But that yeah. was like your thing. Every Tuesday, for you. we do ice cream Tuesdays. And she remembers too. Like she's at school. I pick her up and she's like, dad, it's ice cream time. And it's, yeah, it's just. It's fun stuff, man. It really is. Um, let's see. Raul saying his daughter is all about the frosted flakes. Kristen, also, I agree. Every little girl is obsessed with unicorns. The white boys are obsessed with dinosaurs. Unicorns. What the hell? Instinctively, almost. It's odd. 100% agree with Dickie on the daddy's girl. My five-year-old daughter is my inspiration. That's from Sabor Music Enterprises. You start thinking... Trey? different things when you're in that parent zone you're like what is it about mickey mouse or elmo or whatever what is it about them that kids are just so intrigued by is it the, I, is, eyes, uh, is it the giant eyes what the does voice? that mean why, yeah why do her and ben just, both like giggle at team start, umizumi so yeah, much like what is it about can what i make they, this show what are they tapping into you could like, how is it that all universally all these little kids are g- gravitating towards it's, X visual stimulation yeah. colors mm-hmm. voices voices high voices high voices big eyes you know, but little boys, when Cartoon they see action. dinosaurs, man, it's it's kind of wild. I saw I saw your nephew, baby James. Dinosaurs and trucks. Like, little boy, it's, it's, it's way, so way wild how little boys and little girls traditionally gravitate towards their own little world. Like, Emmy, if it's got rainbows, sparkles, or unicorns, same. Fucking all about it. Ben, same. if it's a, if it has wheels and it's a truck or it's like a dinosaur. Rah! Are you talking about Spotty's underwear? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, By underoos. Baseline train the building. What's up, buddy? Underoos. Um, love that guy. Not many not many people I could say I shared wings at Magic City with. <laughs> Baseline train's my guy. Not many guys I've had that amazing experience with. So what I was going to say is, 
my baby rant. That's how we got here. <laughs> it had nothing to do with Google. I'm and sorry, guys. dude. I'm sorry, bro. Huggies and, and nuggies or anything like that. Is huggies a new term? Did we, we didn't say that when we were kids, right? Huggies. I mean, they were diapers, right? Yeah, it's true. Huggies. I went to the barber shop yesterday. Oh, here's the point of my story. I don't like when people. Touch you. Don't touch me. When the barber rubs his dick on your arm. I don't like when people rub their <laughs> dick on my arm. When he's washing your hair and he's like really leaning into it. Spot when when, you, when your barber a, tea, tea bags you during was, washing your hair. There was a kid I went to high school with. His name was Dimitri Kazoulis, right? Dimitri. Greek. And he looked exactly like the kid with the SpongeBob t-shirt. That kid. You know the meme? They're like, I don't give a fuck. Leave me alone. Oh, yeah. Like foreign Russian face. Yeah. That kid. So Dimitri was a kid that I went to high school with way back on a Wednesday. And, you know, the old game of make fun of the foreign kid. Ah, I missed that game. <laughs> when I was little, I was probably that kid for a lot of people. But as I got older, it was Dimitri. This right? kid, right? He looked exactly like him. When I see this kid, I'm like, Dimitri. And Kavino, leave me alone. Yeah. No, no. I swear to God. Here's what happens. And this is what's... Your jokes do not amuse is, me. This is why Russell Westbrook made a mistake. Because one day, one of... My friends went up to him and just did something like that. Just like poked at him. Yeah. He went, Don Dash me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what the whole class did. <laughs> so, you know, everybody did every day. Don Dash me. And everyone was like, Don Dash me. Don Dash me. So, uh, dude, everyone uh, touched this kid just so he could say that. West Brick. Every, yeah. West Brick. West like, Brick. West Brick. So now, because Russell Westbrook. Made it so very clear that he doesn't like that. Everybody's going to hit him with the West Brick. That doesn't mean that people should threaten his family in any way. But, man, that's just open open territory now to break this guy's balls. So, no, nobody touched me at the barbershop. Don't touch me. <laughs> nobody touched me. I don't like when people think I'm, think I'm dumb or don't see through their... Their bullshit. Don't see through their tactic. By the way, that's like, a no, bro. Oh, like, you don't like being you don't like being duped. You you're are you really fucking going there that. with me, dude? Like you're really gonna like like I'll give you the old example. Remember, I was shopping for a car, and I'm like, I, I was like, I want it. No, I want it in silver. And the guy's like, No, blue, my friend. You remember? Oh, yeah. I'm like, I don't want blue. I want a silver one. Nah, you look but better. The blue. ladies like the blue. I'm like, fuck out of here with your sales tactic. You think I'm that dumb? Because you, yeah, because you worked on some other idiot. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get off track. But Spock, can you pull up the family truckster scene from Vacation when Chevy Chase is like, uh, "This is not the car I ordered." And Eugene Levy's like, "No, no, you want the uh, yeah, the, the family like, truckster." I don't like when people. <laughs> no, I don't want the family truckster. I don't like when they. Are, are sort of trying to play me in that right. way. They're trying to pull the wool over trying your eyes. Trying to pull the wool over my eyes. And I see it all the time. I smell it. Mm -hmm. I sniff it out. It's like a Tom Sawyer. Rich does it to me all the time. Like that, Rich tries to do that a lot. And I'm like, I, I smell do? it. Rich is like, yeah, well, you know, we need a ride. We'll buy you some pizza or something. Like, fuck out of here. Like, I want your pizza. I don't want your pizza. Don't try to sell me on this. Well, right? I don't like that right feeling. Model. <laughs> you know, I think you're right. I don't think this is the car. This is the new Wagon Queen family truckster. This is a this is a damn fine automobile. If you want my honest opinion, beats the hell out of the sports wagon, but I want to make you happy, huh? Davenport! I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Not the car I ordered. Not the car I ordered. Oh, but I'll be honest with you. I mean, this is a better Don't car than the one you ordered. Buddy. business elsewhere. Where's my old car? <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah. everyone have a car with yes, wood paneling at some point? My Davenport. parents had a caravan like that. Yeah, we yeah, had the Mr. Buick, uh, Buick station wagon. And Eugene Levy's hair in this movie is something to talk about. Right? His hair now looks like Fabio. He's great. He does. Yeah. Him Super and his handsome. son have like the same haircut. Super handsome. Yeah. He really aged gracefully. Eugene Levy, because he looked old then. That's why. Right. That's the, that's the key. The key. You always look old. So back to my story. It's a two-part doozy. The first part is just... A follow-up to something I'm very keen on, I'm aware of. We've already established that we're social observation experts. Okay, I can't help but notice and make observations and, and sort of analyze what's going on here. So I walk into this place, right? And the same thing happened to me again that happened to me two previous times at this place. I walk in, it's a bunch of young vatos, right? I'm not trying to look like a young vato. I'm in my, like, 
my weakest mode possible because I'm just going there to get a haircut. Like I came in there with my hair washed already, like floppy hair, like as hey. weak as I could be, right? You're not a young Vato anymore. You're I'm better. not a young Vato, right? So these guys come in, they size me up. Like, oh, look at these guys. And I'm thinking, you know, who are you fucking looking at, fool? Right? That's what I'm thinking. And they're fool. looking at me, fool. And, and, you, and you were wearing your high socks, and we know what that means. Higher the sock, downer yeah. the fool. You, down but, you buttoned yeah. up your uh, shirt all yeah. just to the top button. So, bro, I'm very, very aware, overly aware. And you're like, Kavito, you're crazy. No, I'm aware. You just got your head up your butt. I'm noticing what's happening. Being sized up. You're a professional observer. We talked about professional. this. Professional. This guy looks at me. The other barber's sitting down, chilling. So there's two vatos. One vato's wrapping up the, the guy. He's done. I can see it. He's already tapering the neck. He's already done with this guy. The other guy, sit, the other vato, sitting down on his phone, and they go, yeah, you could go see that guy. And I'm like, this fucking weird-looking foreign guy? Why do I want the fucking Vato cut? Why do I want this guy? Clearly, they pawned me off to the third seat again. So I don't want to sound like a broken record because I already told this story with the chubby woman with the purple hair. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't come here for chubby woman with purple hair. I came here for the street fade. Vic Blends, give me the Vato cut. Not the fucking third seat. I'm first trumpet. First trumpet. Priority. <clears throat> I'm not that guy. But he sized me up. He's like, yo, look at this guy. No way. We're, we, we're here to shape up the young guys or something. Something's going on. Or yeah. they don't want to deal with my attitude. Something's going on. And now you, uh, you, you go to uh, his chair. The new guy. Hey, what's your name? Have, uh, have I any, didn't have it this time. Though. Have any of these Vatos ever cut your hair before? No. I oh, told you. They pawned me off. Because then they would know how difficult you are? No, they haven't. I don't think he uh, So I know, I'm not... I'm not joking. You're maybe, actually you're maybe, very diffi- you're maybe, a very difficult barber client. Maybe very originally, client. Spot. maybe originally, right? So maybe they didn't want to deal with you because even even Addy, who oh I know loves that. you, will even yeah. say like, "Oh, Kavina's the worst." Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So it could be I'm difficult, but either way, they've pawned me off to the weak seat. I'm like, "Yo, dude, I'm not the weak haircut guy." Like, I want a dope fade. Maybe it's not the skin tight that you're given or the shape up, the Dominican cut. I don't want all that because I'm not 20, but I still want my shit precise. So don't pawn me off to the fucking weak chair. I'm here for the dope chair. My money's doper and just as green as anyone else. Okay? That doesn't even make sense, but you know what I'm trying to say. I'm not here for the weak guy. I'm here for the dope guy. Hey, who do you think I am? What country do you think this is? I love everything about your stories. <laughs> because the common denominator is always you. Right? <laughs> So, uh, right? so dude, when, when I tell you I'm not this exaggerating, never happens to no. me. You know why? I make appointments and, and I, I go see the same I know, guy. I, know, but, but but I dude, like the I story. Made, I, I like the made story, an though. online appointment. I like the story. I made though. an online appointment for 4:30. <laughs> I called them up. I said, "Yo, I could be there at four. And they're like, "All right, yeah, come at four then." I'm like, "All right, cool." So I made an appointment online. Did the whole big boy thing. I didn't just walk in. But my point is, if you're not connecting the dots, there was two vatos who probably had street skills that I'm looking for that were too busy for me. So they gave me to the weak dude that I'd never seen there before. The guy, now, looks like, the, the, the guy's he name is Vladimir like, and he looked like the guy in the SpongeBob, oh, like so a grown up SpongeBob kid. That. No, he, he, he's, he looked like DJ quails. He had one of those little fucking scullies up like a little <laughs> sailor scully. Right. And I'm like, I, I looked at the guy and I fucking said to him like straight up mean mugged him. I'm like, why this guy? Who's this guy, right? Because the uh, other Vato's here playing Candy Crush, and you're here fucking wrapping up the deal. Why that guy? How do you know these Vato's are first chair? Because I know. These are the guys, right? Plus, you could just know. You know. They got that barber swag. This guy looks like he's got sweatpants on. He's like, he's not, he doesn't have barber swag. He's wearing like a little fucking rolled up scully. Like, he looks like a foreigner. He has a mustache. Like, who is this guy, Right? I feel like I can picture exactly what you're saying. This Mexican has the nerve to say to me, swear to God, he goes, yo, man, he, he's Russian, bro. I'm like, so? He's like, yo, they give mad haircuts in Russia. <laughs> I swear, yo, bro, I swear to God. You should, I'm like, you know, you said, I'm half Ukrainian. I don't want to no, mess with him. I'm like, uh, I'm like I, this is the they weird. They give mad haircuts in about, Russia. Talk about awkward, right? So it's a Vato standoff. I'm like, what does that have to do with anything, bro? You know. I'm like, a, why do I, I'm like, what does that have to do with like, a Russian woman they have come Russian hair? haircuts? Who cares? I think you're a little barber racist. I'm not going to lie. 
No, I have an expectation. I'm not there for the weakest. There's How do you know he's the weakest? Because he's Russian? No, it might have been like his turn. racist. Because people come there. No, uh, I didn't care if he sorry. was Russian. I didn't know he was Russian. This is a stereotype. He told me that. I'm going to embrace. I know that's first chair, second chair. Who's that guy? That's the guy nobody wants to cut their hair, and they're pushing me off to that guy. This is a stereotype I would embrace. I don't know, bro. I feel like bro, you. I, I know. Like, uh, I'm an expert in this. I know you are. You are more so than I am. I know that, but I just feel like I don't know. I'm I'm Russian. I'm taking a little offense, bro. When there's a, when there's a carousel of barbers, right? Say <laughs> People have clientele. You don't know want the Drago cut? No. People know. People know. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm like here. The Drago cut. I'm here for that guy. I'm here for that guy. I'm here for that guy. And the then side. there's always like the weak barber who's like, yo, no, no one's here for me. <laughs> you know what? So the when s- when the random guy comes in. The random guy gets the weak barber. That's what how shall it works. I give you? The Soviet swag? Hold on, sit down. Bro, I've spent lots of time sitting in a barber. I give shop. you the Moscow mule. That's how it works. <laughs> the the unassuming dude or the guy who's like not the regular or I the give guy you the, who, the guy who they don't think has that expectation. The Petersburg that they, bump. They don't want to deal with. For example, the Petersburg bump. Sit down. I give you the Belarus buzz. All right, let's <laughs> let's say if I'm if I'm at Luigi's, right? Yes. Like I'm sitting at Luigi's. Yeah. For the for the young dude to cut my hair, I know. Like I'm waiting because I know that's the dope cut, right? Any old guy, an old timer, he'll go and fucking get Luigi because no, he's just an old guy. He has no expectation, right? Or some some guy who's like new, like hey man, do uh do I have to make an appointment? No, no, come on in. That guy goes to the weakest barber. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I know it's so they send uh, me like to our, the- our our buddy Addy described to me once. I go, where do kids get their hair cut? He goes, it's a good question. He goes, when you're on your come up and you're fresh out of barber school and you're learning your skills, he goes, that's who cuts kids hair. And he goes, then you graduate to like, all right, a couple older clients. And he goes, once you're established, unless it's someone, a friend of the family or someone you've known forever, he goes, no one's cutting kids hair if they don't have to. And he's like, there's a hierarchy. People that have a lot of walk-ins, that's a level versus people that don't do walk-ins because they have a clientele that's already booked up. Right. So you, you're, I know what you're saying. You're saying like, they Laddie, who's sitting off. around doing no. nothing. There's a reason. His name was Igor. Igor. I'm Igor. <laughs> Igor. You know, oh, is it the guy that you still in your place? So hold on. This isn't a repeat conversation about I was pawned off. This is the third or fourth time this happened to me. So I'm like, so eventually I, I'm like, what's up with this, man? He's like, yo, what? And I'm like, who's that guy? You, know, you told me to come in. Don't take the Ukrainian conflict out on actual Russian yeah. people. It's no. not their fault. It has nothing to do with it. I didn't know he was Russian. I didn't know. It's, it's all Putin, I know is I've been Russian this guy, and I know right. just by leader. the look of him, you got two swaggy fucking vatos cutting hair, and then you got some doofy looking guy with a mustache. Okay, so you don't have to be a, a genius to do the math here. This guy's the weak seat. Is it true that you then turned to him and said, if I could change and you could change, we all could change? It's not about that. It's about <laughs> when I asked the guy, what's up? He's like, what? He's Russian. I'm like, okay, what's up? He goes, they give man, they give good haircuts to Russian man. I'm like, it's about that. It's like, you're really going to try to sell me with that bullshit line? Like, you think I'm that dumb to be like, oh, okay. So they give dope Russian haircuts? I didn't know. Man, I can't wait to get oh, into the can seat I, uh, now. Can you give me the Nikolai Volkov? I hate <laughs> can I have the Stalin sweep? I want to strangle. That's oh. the same guy who's like, Magic Johnson, I didn't even know, yo. Oh. Can I have the, the Putin comb over? I'm like, you think I'm as dumb as you to buy to buy into that <laughs> bullshit? Oh, they oh they give great. That's his, that was his tag. He's trying to sell me on a horse shit. Hey, do you have this car in, uh, in, in, in the silver gray? No, but we have it in green. And let me tell you, bro, women love the green. No, 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 no bro. Like, I, I, what's I want, going on, bro. I, I, You're sending me to the weak seat. No, I want this right. car. I want oh, this car in, in gray. Did you know the latest trend in, in Russian hairstyles is bangs? So you can. Oh, oh you should have got that haircut. <laughs> that one. No, that one's oh. fine. No. <laughs> See? No, I want the middle one with the just bangs. Just. All bald, just bangs. That one. So, long story short, <laughs> it's not about being pawned <laughs> off. I give you bangs. It's about. You want the bangs? Them trying to sell me some bangs. bullshit line about, you know, oh, he's the Russian cut. Like, he, they're, they're, they got mad barbers yeah, look, like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> they, they love no, Adidas tracksuits, how about you just being a way. lazy vato, bro? How about that? Oh, there you go. How about you just pushing me off to that guy? Because you don't want to deal with me for oh, some reason. Oh, it's seductive. Like, I'm not here for that guy. That's the look, Anyway, bro. his name was Igor. And, yeah I, yeah, I hooked him up with an extra tip <laughs> because I wanted him to be like, sweet, thank you. Oh, look, this guy's got a girl. I gave oh, him, you can smoke cigarettes with Melody? I gave him an Great. extra tip just so he could rub it in the Vato's faces. And 
Oh, look I, at this I guy. I the Vatos, too, Laying because I heard some other dude talking about fighting again, and I'm like, this dude don't know shit. So I called him out about the Jose Ramirez fight. He didn't even know what the fuck I was talking about. Glitchko. I'm like, yeah, you don't, know, you don't know shit. Whatever. Fuck you guys. Pointing me <laughs> off to Igor. <laughs> Pointing me off to Igor. So it's not about uh, third C. It's about when people try to bullshit you with their line to get you to be like, oh, oh cool. Yeah. Can I give you a couple people to do this? I don't like that. Um, I, I, I'll give you a couple people to do this. I sniff it out. Um, I'm, a, I'm allergic to that. I had to call up my mortgage I'm like, company. what does that mean? I had to call up my mortgage company yesterday because they fucked up my homeowner's insurance. Has anyone, I'm, I'm sure everyone's had this happen. Has, has your mortgage been sold to a different bank ever? Right? Has that happened to you? Yeah. Happens all the time. Like, hey, I have a- uh, like Carlton? I have Commerce Bank. And all of a sudden you get a letter in the mail. It's like, yep, now you're with, uh, you know, Citizens Bank. And you're like, I didn't ask for this. But fine. Well, they, they messed it up. So I had to call them. And while I'm on the phone with them, they're asking me about refinancing. I'm like, I bought this house like two years ago. Not even. And I got a rate in the twos. I, stop. Like, stop right there. They're like, yeah. but sir, I'm like, I don't want to hear your, exactly. like, I don't want to hear you your bullshit hear your, pitch. The bullshit that other people, that they're selling to other people. Other people are dumb. Like, oh, okay, you know okay. who does this too? And I'm, and I'm interested okay. long, I'm, I'm interested long term for this, but the people that sell it are full of baloney. Spot, have you bumped into at like Home Depot, Lowe's or anywhere, the solar salesmen? Oh, yeah. Solar salespeople? Are the most pushy, like, yo, I'll come to your house tomorrow. It's like, yo, my dude, slow the fuck if, down. If oh I'm God. seeking out solar, I'm uh, doing trust it on me, my own. I will seek out <laughs> solar eventually. It's the wave of the future. But right That's now. That's something that requires a little bit of research, uh, not from a guy at Home trust Depot. Me, I have, uh, I, you know, on the agenda is, and it might be the perfect timing spot because I have to eventually redo the roof here. And when I redo the roof, that might be a good time to investigate solar. So when some guy's like, oh, I'll come by tomorrow. Please. I'm like, no, no, don't come by my house tomorrow. I. I was polite enough when you're like, hey, sir, I was polite enough to be like, yeah, what's going on? Hey, I'm doing solar. And eh, no, thanks, man. I just bought a house. No, no, but come here. No, no. I already told you. I'm done. I don't like it. I'm I don't, I don't like it. That. I sniff yeah. it out. I know when they're just bullshitting me. And the guy knew I was pissed because like, I, I read the room. I'm like, you're, you're pushing me off to the week. Dude. It's like the person at the mall that tries to start cleaning your shoes. You're like, don't touch my shoes. So he goes, <laughs> like, so he tried to offer me, he tried to like, Extend the olive branch. He's like, yo, man, I, I just, I punked the Vato, bro. Now I feel bad. So he's like, I didn't know he was Vato. <laughs> so he offered me a beer because that's what they do at barbershops now. Yeah. Uh, it's probably illegal, but they do that. No, they, they and do I'm it. Like, yeah, I'm like, nah, I don't want uh, you. I'm like, you are, nah, I'm good. If you do it for free. Like, I don't want your beer. It, uh, I should have took it and put it in my bag. If they give it to you, you don't have to have a liquor license. Oh, okay. A lot of restaurants. Yeah, well, anyway, I was like, nah, um, fuck you. I don't like you. Mark, and uh, then Igor cut me up, and I didn't let him go full on in because I didn't trust him that much. And I had to go home and adjust it and fix it myself anyway. But I still tipped him good. Not bad. Yeah. I, Subtle. No, but I, yeah, I, I, I didn't want him to go crazy on it because I didn't trust his skills. I was like, Igor, what's up, man? Guy didn't speak any word of English, which is okay, fine, whatever. That's what done, yeah. He, yeah, we had a little miscommunication problem. Yeah. I said to him, how long you been here, man? Three weeks. Three weeks. They <laughs> pawned me off to the guy. Yeah, three weeks. That was probably his first haircut. But but well, number one haircut in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> it was all right. I mean, he didn't suck. By the way. He didn't suck. Talk about getting out just in time. But, yeah. It was just, it's just the feeling yeah. of, don't bullshit me, man. Yeah. You think I'm dumb? Get out of here. Yeah. No, and, I don't and like that. A lot of people hitting us up about the solar stuff. Yeah, definitely the wave of the future, wave of the future but don't, I don't, don't. Try to, don't try to hard sell me on something. I'm the never gonna. Sell. I'm never going to. Yeah. I'm never gonna deal with the hard sell. Never Just once will you put, be wait, pushy. Wait until your kids become perceptive of the hard sell, because you as a parent tried to. You're gonna instinctively try to hard sell things that are good for them, and they're gonna ev eventually be like, "Yeah, nah," because <laughs> you're like, "Yeah, they're I, really good for I, you." I, I could still. I could still. You I could, could still now. trick Emmy. Like, oh, they're you know really what I do? good. Know what they're I do? good for you. If Emmy, the more you sell it, the more they're like, "Yeah, I don't like it." Guess what, Emmy? Yo, do you want to be? You want to be strong and and powerful and and strong? Yeah. You know what? You need some protein. Eat your chicken. Yeah, Emmy, do you have big? Let me feel your muscles. Eventually, they oh, sense. They Emmy. sense what yeah, you're like, doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And because I remember having those conversations with with my ex, and she'd be like, "You're you're you're selling it too hard." And now she doesn't like it. You're selling it too hard, and, and then when you start to sell things too hard, the kids become perceptive. So that's what you do to a kid. As an adult, when and someone's you. trying to sell me some shit, like, are you serious right now? They yeah. Give, they give good haircuts in Russia. 
Who bought that? The idiot that came in before me? Oh, no, Russia. Great haircuts. Yeah, I don't care if they do, but that's a, what a but terrible I called him out. Him. I said, what does that mean? He's like, oh, shit, I didn't say it. Yo, he's got the eye of the vato. Let me offer him a beer. I didn't mean it in any way. Oh, like, I, uh, yo, I'm an idiot. Stony homie, I don't know if I mentioned this on our show, but I actually did show Emmy a video of Popeye eating spinach. That's because like, you're selling it. Yeah, I'm like, yo, Emmy, you spin a kid. Oh. When you feel that way as an adult, you're like, yo. <laughs> so yeah, uh, solar. Up a, dumb? Up a spot. So oh, Mark hit us up, and Mark, Mark said, uh, Mark said, you know who's good with this? When you're assessing your insurance, right? For let's say your car insurance or homeowners insurance, yeah. you'd be like, hey, what's your rate? Let's say you're paying, I don't know. Let's say just a round number, thousand dollars. What rate can you give me? Well, it says here twelve hundred. All right, no thanks. But sir, no, the conversation ends. It's more than what I'm paying. So that's where trust like, comes along too, though. Like it. You have to have a, a mixture of, of trust and intelligence because sometimes, sometimes you're out of your league, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, barbers, haircuts, this is my, this is my lane. Yeah. I know what's going on. Big Andrea Barber fan. Yeah. But Tiki is no, no, one no, of my no, favorites. Come on, Kimmy Gibbler? Way better than Tiki Barber. I don't know about that. So... So when you're dealing with things that might be out of your league, out of your ballpark, out of your intelligence range, that's where you really got to trust the guy and make sure they're not selling you on some bullshit. So it's just an annoying experience, but I had to get a haircut because Rich and I are going to Vegas this week. By the way, I agree with several people. Time to find a new shop. They don't respect you, man. Unless now they do. One, I'm going to give you one more time. Go yeah, if you go back, time. if you go back and the guy's like, yo, there's my Vato, sit down in chair one. Yeah, you may have earned the Vato respect now, but if you go back next time and they're like, hey, go to uh, Vlad, I'd, I'd say peace out. I'd just walk right. I'd turn around and be like, ah. Nah. Igor, bro. Igor. I'd turn around right there on the sub spot and walk out and knock something over as I did it. Yeah, it's, it's a humbling feeling. I'm not going to lie. But I don't respect them, or so it works both ways. Bring them tacos the next I'm time. I'm like, you're you're, you're an idiot, Magic Johnson. So they don't like me. I probably don't, and I don't like them. But you know, my money's good, so it doesn't matter. So that's my story yesterday. And it's not it's not about being punked at the barbershop. It's about that feeling of don't try to hard sell. When you hard sell me, my red flags and alerts go off. Like, all right, you went too far now. It's like, uh, it's like embellishing a lie almost. It's like, why are you embellishing? Because you're lying. Right? It's that feeling. You do it to kids. I'm an adult. Like, what do you... Get the fuck out of here. Russian cut. Vic Blends cuts my hair. You're not pushing me off to Igor. Out of here. So I got the Igor cut. Oh, this guy's got some swag. Look at this guy. The Igor cut. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. That's my story. From yesterday. Sad but true. Went home. Died at Just Ravatos. It's all right. It's all right. Could be better. So, yeah, it definitely could be better. Well, we got plenty of news, some stories. Got some stuff. I got uh, some stories I'll get to. Um, By the way, uh, have you ever... Here, here's... A, this is a dumb question. It's not... It's This is not a long conversation. It's just a... Have you ever not utilized something in your house and then start utilizing it and say, oh man, why was I not using it? And it's a, it's a dumb example, but. Uh, uh, soap. Dishwasher is one for, for me. Yeah, like you. My whole life, my mom did the dishes. My mom, till this day. Steven, I don't know how to use it. She opened it up. The tags and all the stickers are still, still, inside. still inside it. My grandmother used to use her. She had her, her kitchen redone in like the late 80s, early 90s. Had a dishwasher. She used it as a filing cabinet. No, because all the women in my family were. I think I remember that spot. I think she, you told me that like your dishwasher had like f- paperwork. It in was it. paperwork in it. And it's then generational my, guilt. It's Mexican my, guilt. I yeah. Call it. When my grandmother moved to the home, and my sister moved into that house. Like she had to replace it because all the seals were like dry and cracked out because they were never used. My grandparents, cracked. my grandparents and parents, same thing. Never had a dishwasher, but I think my grand, my mother, my family growing up in my in my Franklin Square house. We did not have a dishwasher, but my grandparents did, nope. but they never used it. Same. My grandmother, I think had the wrong, maybe it's different now than it was 30 years ago, but she made it seem like a waste of time and water and money and everything. And I'm like, uh, from what I understand, 
I'm told that if I wash dishes by hand, you're wasting more water. The, yes. the new dishwashers are like apparently super saving water and yeah, because they they'll recycle the water. Like it's not. But if you're washing like five dishes, some utensils, and kid shit, and lunch boxes, if you keep the hot water running that whole time, oh, yeah. you know what I? I've you're wasting more water. To answer your question, the apple slicer. I love that thing. Oh, that thing's really oh. game changer. Yeah, game changer. They, subtitles, make, they make the same thing for a pineapple. Did you know that? Oh, really? really? Yeah. yeah, game changers, bro. I use that thing, all, and there's only one, right? So it's always like dirty, and I'm like, fuck, I always got to wash Of all it. the times I bust Sarah's chops, there are times where Sarah buys like handy little doodads for different things. Mm. I'm like, yeah, why'd you buy that? Eh, unnecessary. And then I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you, it, was a, it was a good buy. They're what, what's, what uh, Alton Brown used to call unitaskers. Unitaskers just take up space, and they only serve one purpose, obviously. But sometimes certain ones are worth it. Apple ones are bomb. Apple ones are bomb. I By the way, Bill time. saying he never used them as a, as a kid. Bill hit us up saying he told his mother, "Mom, dishwashers use four gallons of water per wash versus all the running water, and it changed her mind. Maybe you could change your parents' mind because I can promise you, if Cavino, Spot, and myself were all saying our parents and grandparents That's had this information weird, you argued, we uh, never, we never had one. This weird generational, this weird generational guilt of like." Dishwasher? No, I wash them by hand. I don't know why I was raised that way. The way we were all, we all were. Generational right? guilt, and in my family, Mexican guilt, because my grandmother would have frowned at my mom for doing something so like lazy and American. It really is <laughs> the dishwasher. Yeah. It's like if you you're not washing your clothes with a washboard <laughs> in a bucket. It's really the same equivalent. <laughs> Get a fucking dishwasher. So if you can wash your clothes, you can wash so your dishes. To answer your question, with a machine. dishwasher, apple slicer, subtitles, game changer. Subtitles. I'm I'm old guy on board. I know, I'm I, old I'm, guy on I'm board. I'm not fluent in mumbles and grumbles. Like, Yo, I'm like, what did he say? What the fuck? Sorry, I, I, I got to say this. And you'll be like, what are you talking about? I was going to say, sorry, black penis. You've been replaced on the number one thing you can't come back from. Once you go black, you never go back. Once you go subtitle. Once you go subtitles. I think it was Game of Thrones that really changed it for me. Not for me. Or Ozark. Crouch, crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Ozark. Shame. Ozark did it for me because Ozark, no. there's a lot of like. Brr, 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 brr. And poor, Yellowstone was a bit. Yellowstone and Ozark like are both grumble shows. Because they don't. They don't well, your poor sound system. Did it's it. not the yeah. sound system totally spot. An actor's I not hear gonna, just fine at my house. An actor's not going to enunciate, right? Because he's in the role. Yeah. I hear just yeah. fine at yeah. my yeah. house. So, yeah. You're the greatest guy in the world. Like, How am, do I make this out? I really am. I'm the greatest guy on planet Earth. Honestly? Wow. Keep going. Want to want to expand? Want to go for the solar system? Spot. I don't care how good your sound system is. Sometimes shows have grumbles and I just can't bumbles. understand it. Sometimes I hear the grumbles. I'm like, what are they uh, saying? Uh, so you missed the you missed the dialogue. It's crumbles and grumbles, what bro. It, what is it? The troll in the Legend of Zelda? Grumble, grumble. I'm Throw fluent, some beef I'm at your TV. Suganese, but not in grumbles or mumbles. Yeah. Stony Stony said, "Peaky Blinders." How to do the, How to do the uh, well, that's closed all, captioning? That's accents. Subtitles. Yeah, a lot of these shows, EJ Reed, when EJ is on board, I know that's a legit thing because EJ is always right. A Robert, lot of these Robert shows, Reed, bro. Because a lot of these shows now, a lot of grumbling. It's all the grumble spot. Like, because it's like very, everything's so real. And like, I'm just in, I'm just becoming. on a, on spot show, like, Yellowstone. What did they say? Kevin Costner and Yellowstone's always like, oh, yeah, we're going with the ranch. I, I, I never really really understand really. what's going on. I've never had a problem understanding anything. Dude, I didn't I have do. a problem until six months ago. Maybe all of a sudden I hit 42 and I was like, I can't hear. But yo, Yellowstone and Ozark are the two shows where I feel like I get more out of it. I'm, a, I'm able I'm, to follow. I'm listening, more. but I feel like I'm watching and listening at the same time. Like, Game changer. I, trust me. I don't know. I what enjoy it much more when I know what is actually going on. Nah. Yeah. Because otherwise I'm just using my body language to figure out what's going on here. Oh, he looks mad. <laughs> David, Cast said, David but, Castillo said Game of Thrones. So a lot of people said I, that it's. I think it was Game of Thrones that really know, changed it for me because it was just a lot of dialogue and like, what did he but, say? But a lot of times there's great sound effects and music and orchestral shit. And uh, underneath that, there's a layer of like, grumble, grumble, grumble. grumble. Like I, I. You know, obviously with foreign shows, you have to, but for America, it's yeah, just, no, I know, I'm, I know, not, I, I'm not I, there yet. You know, I'm not there yet. Spot, Maybe I'm not there yet. Spot, Maybe that's now, it. Oh, you know what? I've only been on it's it for six once, months and you're a year younger than me. Once you go there, you never come back. Uh, dude, know what we'll it is? See. Start the clock. It's the Jackie Robinson. It's the 4-2. When you turn 42, Spot, July 24th is the day. All of a sudden, Spot's going to be like, wait a minute. It's also an appreciation. It's like, I want to know the dialogue. I don't want to just use my... My instincts to figure out That's what's going work. on. You have to tweak your sounds. I know. I'll do that. Both of you. 
Well, sometimes too. When I'm done, sometimes when, when, when it's not tweaked right, the music drowns out. Yeah. When, when I'm done giving, when I'm you done giving, adjust uh, in your Sonos app, yeah. Steve. Oh, I got mine. Mine's good. You can adjust all <laughs> your your vocal mm-hmm. range. I what, know. Primary even even, even on your TV, there's different settings. I I get it. I, you know, I, I'll I'll let you work on my sound, sound system sound after guy. after I realize how many tens of thousands of dollars I owe the IRS during tax season. Once I'm once I once I uh, once I, I, s- I cut the IRS uh, check for uh, fifty thousand dollars this year. I submitted all our stuff this week. I did so. yesterday as well. So so, so yeah, I I. Kavino brings it up every year, and I'll back Kavino up. The letter you the, the letter, what is this fucking document? Brown eighteen hundreds. The the email you get from your accountant with the attachment is the annual highest level of anxiety email you open. Oh, they wrote me back. Hold on. All right, I'm not gonna open it yet. Let me go. I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. I don't want to open it yet. Then you're like, oh. Yeah. At what point do I want to like ruin my day? Or now or later, it's like, and then you're like, all right, open the attachment. I, oh, fe- oh all right. Not as bad as I thought. Oh, what? Like you're going to have you never do nothing. The, the, the letter and the email from your accountant is the number one annual anxiety email you get more so from a, more so than a boss, more so than anyone. When your accountant's like, here's what I came up with. You're like, what did he come up with? Or like the diso master that your lawyer sends you. Pay. I've had to pay. How much money you have to pay for alimony or child support like just, i've had to pay over 10 grand before it's like you just pay <laughs> you look at it you're like I, paid le- I don't even want to get into it no, what I, I paid like more than i've ever paid in my life by 10 times last year same oh. hey rich don't lose Let's track of what you're gonna say well, money uh, no you money. said alimony and disomaster so before i get to my story can i give it uh, a news alert you don't have to do the news news thing spot but kelly clarkson after years of battling for her divorce settlement her ex-husband brandon blackstone I'm sorry, black stock. Black heart. Can I guess 42,000 a month? No. 130 something thousand dollars a month. No, it isn't. Look it up. Look it up. uh, Just look it up because I'm pretty sure she had to pay him one point. She had to pay him $1.3 million payout. He got a portion of their home, which equaled millions. 45,000 per month. No, but add it with child support and alimony together. I think it was like. Oh. It's like one. Oh, okay. So it's 1.3 million. Plus monthly spousal support, so forty five thousand per month in child support. Yeah, and then spousal is like one something. Uh, let's see. So this dude is getting like the, he's getting the deal. He's getting the deal that oh, one hundred and fifteen thousand per month Good. until January. Yeah, thirty first, twenty twenty four. Dude, dude gets forty five. I mean, I'm, I'm he sad gets for Kelly Clarkson because yeah. she seems like a nice woman, but. On behalf of all women who find it okay, then beat it, beat it, whatever. Yeah, this dude's getting one point three million dollar initial payout, then forty five thousand dollars a month child support, and a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a month spousal support. So, over the next two years, while he's collecting, and he gets a part of their property. So, man, just to think how much Kelly Clarkson he must also be rolling. Gets, let's see. Uh, We'll get... And, by the way, just, just so you know, that's spousal support. He gets farm farm cattle, livestock, stock dogs, and horses, multiple vehicles, and watches. Hey, she's making bang. <laughs> Can I tell you? Right? Can I tell you what What he's getting is 45... I don't... See, the, the, the spousal... For a hundred k a month or whatever, I'll and tell the, you what he's getting. And the payoff, a much hotter. And this isn't a knock; this is just a fact. A hot ass woman who now has her money, has her money, and it's so fucking wrong. I know, because there's gonna be some young woman that's like, like "Ooh, right. Kelly Clarkson's dude, ex got money. Yeah, he's getting all that Kelly Clarkson money now." That, you know what? And I'm glad Kelly Cookson hit us up with this one. What? That we, one of our listeners, oh. their screen name is Kelly Cookson. I was going to point out that he gets $45,000 a month in child support for one weekend a month. He gets the kid one weekend a month. So imagine being like, you only see your kid once a month, which which sucks for him, I'm sure. What's he going to take him to uh, the Maldives get, uh, once a month? Exactly. $45,000 a month for one weekend a month? Now he Man. rents out Disneyland. What the hell? He just month. shuts it down. He better. Like, imagine if, like, if you were paying that much for child support a month, wouldn't you be like, you better... Be doing something? Duke. Who do you think I was paying when I no. had ESPN and Series Six? Not forty-five thousand a no. month, but a lot, a lot. Well, I know what you were paying for. It's wild. 
It's my dad, my dad knows how much we were paying because he knows how much I make, and it's a joke. he's like, and he was like, he's like, yeah, it's different. He goes, I, I goes, I, I paid your mother, but not even close to the percentages and numbers of today. And he's like, it's a joke. Yeah. He's like, he, he, uh, my I mean, dad, my dad was saying he's like, do you most want people, to- most people don't make what Kavino pays his ex-wife. You can't have wrinkles when you drop your kid off at school. Yeah, paid. Because it took a major pay cut. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, the only like awesome part about taking a That's major pay cut support, right? is I don't have to pay as much. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm almost like I don't want to be successful because I, I don't want to pay more. You can't wear sweatpants when you drop your kid off at school. That's why I'm That's saying she, I was going to say she, your ex, and I'm not just saying your ex, everyone's ex that's getting yeah, something the law. should be root. No, should be rooting. Like I would imagine your ex-wife should be your biggest fan. You think I can put my your ex-wife should have Kavino foam fingers because put, any deal you get. There's a percentage. I can't put my child in a rented two bedroom apartment. Yeah, but Spot, that's, not that's like, it's as much as I agree with you, it's unfair. I know. Because I know. I know. that would be the law that's the problem, not the oh, person I, that's I the problem. I completely agree. You know, the person's just getting what the law I believe, grants them. I believe that receipts should have to be submitted yeah, for every ridiculous. dollar that's given. Yeah. That's what I believe. So, but like, my gripe it really system. isn't it's with not, the person. It's the system. It's not you. It's the system. Yeah, it's, I, I have no gripe. Like, for instance, I have no gripe with And I know any, that sounds like. Hogwash, it's not. I'm doing what I have to do. I, I would never. And it blows. I would never think that it's an ex-wife or ex-husband's fault. They would just get... If you were told, hey, Cavino, fill out this form and you're going to get such and such, you would, do, you would get whatever you can. No one's, no one's doing favors for their ex-husband or ex-wife. That's the point. But Kelly Clarkson paying a hefty sum of money to Brandon Blackstock, who now becomes the hottest commodity... <laughs> In the Midwest, or yeah. wherever the hell he's from, a handsome guy living on a farm with millions of dollars. What's and his deal? How did what do they? How do they know each other? He's like a music producer. He's uh. like the nephew of some. Mu- they met through the country music scene. I think he's like the nephew or son of like some big time person. So he's already probably got family money. Well, listen, focus factor. Yeah, you asked me a question. Oh, what what don't you use? Yeah, in your house. Okay. Well, you I went on a tangent. I went no, on a tangent. So right. I answered your question today. I've only used it oh, twice. Oh, she's so the f- former stepson of Reba McIntyre and son of former manager. Yeah. So Narvel Blackstock. Yeah. So, so he's Kelly that- Clarkson's manager's son. Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now, when we first moved into this house, I would say one bathroom was mostly like one bathroom was the one that was most finished. Right. If that makes sense bathroom that we give the kids a bath in it's a bathroom that the kids brush their teeth in. it's it's the main bathroom like if we have a party at our house or people are watching the fight or the game it's it's, it's, like, what'd you the, call it? it's like the the, it's the hallway like, bathroom like hey yeah, right like off the, the living room there's the hallway bathroom the game not, with michael douglas yeah it's not a powder it's a full-size bathroom um so it wouldn't be like a powder room but it's like a, yeah like the, the, the guest bathroom yeah dude sink single sink toilet Tub shower with a shower curtain, like your main regular hallway bathroom. Kids use it to brush their teeth. There's bath toys in the tub type of shit. It's a kid's bathroom. Yeah, it's a kid's bathroom. But it's the one one you have like Francis with the big like pool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should use that one. It's interesting you would say that because the Buxton bathroom. Let me tell you, if you want to feel poor, side, side note, I know you're on your story. There's a house that's that sold. The house that was on the market for $250 million. Yeah, you most, showed us the other day. Yeah, I showed you the other day. I meant brought it up. It was on the market. It actually sold to the CEO of Fashion Nova, where the, all, the, all the hot Instagram models uh, pimp their like one single-use fashion. It sold for like $120 million, but still. Uh, but I watched it. It's just, I was flipping through YouTube last night. I saw a video walkthrough of this place. This place is ridiculous. It has indoor pools, outdoor pools. It's ridiculous 40, or stonkulous? Stonkulous. Like 40-something bathrooms, 20-something bedrooms. It has an indoor nightclub, or it has a, a bowling alley. Things that don't a seem movie needed. Theater, you could take a, a shit. Candy. You could take a shit <laughs> in every, a different bathroom every day. Right. It has a, a spa. It has like a, uh, like the, the bedroom, the master bedroom is bigger than this house. No joke. Shit the closet every day. is That's bigger you know you made it. than my, apart- my apartment. The closet. But, yeah, it's, it's not a powder room. I'm talking about just, like, it's, the main, it's the main bathroom yeah. that company would use and the kids used to brush their teeth. It's like the family bathroom, if that makes sense. Yes. Now, because it was the first bathroom that the construction folks completed, when we first moved in, 
while they were still tweaking things around the house, I started using that bathroom the way you would. It's like, all right, it's right there. It's in the middle of the house, essentially. So when the kids are getting up for school and I'm getting ready for, to do this, that's where I shower, brush my teeth and all that. When they completed our master bathroom in our bedroom. You never moved your shit. I never like bathroom. moved my toiletries. I never moved my soaps and shampoos. Why the long hesitation though? Well, because you're, I don't know. I get your You're story. in a routine. No, I you're get it. You're in a routine. Yeah. I know, but you, you still, eventually you're like, your breaking of the routine is longer than most people. So Agreed. Like, I moved into our guest bedroom bathroom. When I had COVID, like I moved all my toiletries over there to shower there. I haven't moved back since. Now I just shower in the in the bed or spare bath, bath. That's just lazy. I, oh, just, it is. I don't it feel is. like I got comfortable. And I'm like, I don't know. And I've, we've all been there. But yeah, Rich, you, but you, I, you, you, his shit was done for a long ass time. I get comfortable. And I'm like, Getting routine. And, and my contractor's like, hey, because he checks up because, you know, he's on contract, I guess, for a, a year or so where. He will come back free of charge for the next year or so to be like, yo, if anything's a little tweak that you need a tweaking, like, was the water pressure? Is this? Is there any leakage? Is it, you know, because things settle. Like, uh, the tile's right. Are you feeling it? Do you need to re grout anything? That's, he's sort of on call. Like, that's sort of the deal of having a general contractor for a flip of a house, right? He's like, how's the guest? How's your master bathroom? I was like, yo, Eric, I got to be honest. Like, I've hardly, I, I didn't want to say I've never used it. I was like, I hardly use it. So I was like, I got to start using this. I went in there yesterday and today. It's a huge, monstrous glass shower with the overhead waterfall faucets and like changer. I was like, like, Sarah, it's like, you got to use this. She's like, yeah, I've been using it here and there. And she's like, it's remarkable. It's like three different shower heads. Is it the overhead, the hang, the, I gotta be honest. I, I got all that and I don't ever use it. I don't use the overhead. You don't use it's it's, it's, uh, it's not called the waterfall. What is it like, called? It's like, <laughs> I love it's it. It's just in my face the whole time. I, I just stand under it like Rocky Balboa after he got killed by Drago. Like you know, I am. I maybe I gotta use it more. I don't use it, but it's one of those like you might not even be using one of your own amenities. So that it was just my reminder that sometimes you get so in a routine where like there are times. All right, I'll give you a great example. How many times? Do you have a huge TV in like a theater room? Yeah. But most of the time you're watching like in the family room on a little TV because it's just sort of your yeah. routine. Like I see my brother. My brother will watch TV in like the back little den area with a little TV with like bird cages and shit. And I'm like, Jimmy, don't you have a bigger TV in your living room? He's like, yeah. But that's sort of the routine. It's off the kitchen. It's, it's you know, people get in their routine. So yeah, rain, it's the rainfall, the rain shower. The rain, the, whew, I like it. It's like the big ass rainfall. Oh, it's fantastic. But um, I guess my point is don't not use what you paid for. Don't don't like, get in the routine of. It's like your benefits. You pay for them. It, yeah. Uh, I'm not so going go to go. Well yeah, my foot hurts. Nah, I'm not going to go to the doctor. Sorry. For well, look at your paycheck. My new insurance. You get hundreds of dollars taken out each month. Kavito, you're paying for insurance. If your foot hurts, go to the doctor. Sorry right? for my new insurance company. <laughs> They're feeling the brunt of my ailments. But you know what, Spot? I think of how many times you probably paid over the years and never used it. Oh, yeah. Right? So well, um, home well. theater is a great example, Rich. He goes, I had one at my old place and hardly used it. I bought a nice big TV. And I ended up, you know, you end up watching on like the small kitchen TV or something. You're like, what am I doing? Use the I'm cool sure things. Alexa does a lot more than I use it for. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I thanked her on International Women's Day yesterday. I mean, Alexa, you're a good woman. Thanks, yeah. Alexa. You listen to most of the things I tell you to do. When I tell you to put the music up, you don't listen. Alexa, play Pepas by Farruko. <laughs> <laughs> so. You're welcome, everyone. We're not using. Yeah, you use your. Car. Bells and whistles. You're or, not using or, your house bells and whistles. Tech, our technology at home. I've lived in. I've house. lived in a. I've lived the in an apartment. We're supposed the I, way we paid for it to function. I've lived in apartment complexes that maximize your. Options. I, I've lived in apartment complexes that are like we have a game room and a gym and a this and what do you not use? The amenities you're paying for, right? I say that to Jordan all the time, but she's convinced she would. She's convinced she does. No, no I, I mean, use those things. I'm Jordan, like, right, Jordan well, is Jordan is we'll see. way more mature than her years. And she's almost 30. She's not young anymore. But what I'm saying is 
No time there, wow. there are things. Wow. Well, but, but you always say like. Wow. I know, I but you know wow. what I mean. <laughs> I mean, you're saying silly things. How is that an insult? We're, we can, you isn't it insulting? We'll see if it's an insult. In isn't it insulting? Sure. Isn't Wait, if she texts? She's not me. young anymore. Isn't it insulting to treat her like she's twenty? She's not twenty. She's almost thirty. Like he started dating her. <laughs> I'll stand by it. I'll, I'll double down. Jordan's not young anymore. Like we make it seem like. Kavino's with this younger, younger. She's not twenty. He's not dating a college girl. She's thirty. She Damn, has life. She's so gonna be thirty. She has life experience. Girl. But the one yeah. thing, the one thing that Jordan still probably clearly has not learned yet, yeah. is that when you get a place based on amenities, no one uses them. I lived in when I was living in Midtown Manhattan. They I sold don't. us. She swears she will that not. she's the one that does though. That's the thing. And I'm like, all right. Well, if you say so. All right. Well, maybe, say, maybe she would be the one. I'm rich on that, but I, she swears that she's the one that like uses the amenities. Bro, I lived in a place right. in, in, when I was in Manhattan. They called yeah, but, the seventh floor. You're not her. They called the say. seventh floor of my. Remember the ivory tower in New York? Yes, I know. Exactly they used, they called about. the seventh they floor. Pool in there and no, they, they, they called the There's seventh nice floor. There. They called the seventh floor the seven, and it was like fifty bucks a month membership. And you're like, yeah, I'll pay fifty bucks. The fuck. Seven? Yo, Lisa Paraggio. And you know what the seven If had? Jordan's not young, then you must be really old to rich. Think about it. No, but when you say Jordan's young, like, <laughs> just, you, you can't pay, like, she's not I'm a college girl. Jordan has, like, fire. life I'm experience. Kidding. She's a woman now. She's I'm not kidding. A, you know, but you can't but, treat her like she's, a, like, a school girl. So, the amenities, just something you never use. It, it's the truth. I so, agree. Use your shit. Use your shit the way it was meant to be used. How many people have a hot tub? They bought it and they don't use it. Or people have a, you know, people. How many people have like a sweet ass like knife block or something that they never use? And then all of a sudden they're like, no, oh, fuck. This is actually pretty good. Yeah, use I your should b- use these all the time. <laughs> these are great. Yeah. No wonder that I should use these for my steak. So everybody has some shit that they don't use. Amenities. Yeah. Ta-da. I guess oh. maybe I don't use my balcony enough. I don't yeah, I know, but I, what I'm saying is, oh, I definitely don't use my fireplace. I never use it. Yes, but when you probably got that place, you're like, and it's got a fireplace. Yeah. Well, you know why? Because people say stupid well, shit. Well, you know why? Because like, do you, is it gas? It's gas. Yeah, like, oh, gas is expensive. So no. like, oh, I guess I'll never use it, even though I got it. You know why? It's weird. It's like it's, there's something faulty because the, the pilot stays on, but the pilot is oh. so loud and just constantly oh, uh, Delta going. Mike? <laughs> yeah. So United I, Tim. Sully Selberger. So I, I. <laughs> In like the summer, there's no point in having this pilot just constantly going. I got you. So I turn it off, but I can't turn it back on. So I just leave it off. You're constantly. paying like eight bucks a day or something like that. Yeah, I just keep, it's off. I, I keep I, it on. I so went underneath. I went underneath. Turn the gas line off, and it's just it's off now. Yo, dude, perfect example. I have get this, guys. A sauna. No, I have uh, no, not anymore. Like Broken. restaurant heat lamps, like the one like installed gas lamps yeah. not 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 the stand-up lamps oh, you have like overhead heat lamps for overhead your, for your, lamps for your that patio you, uh, that you see at a restaurant or something on my patio right the other day i had a little business call and i wanted some privacy so i went to the patio so that my neighbors could hear the conversation instead of jordan. instead of jordan uh so i sat on the patio and it was like it was a little cold out i turned the gas on turned the switch on <laughs> Beautiful. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why don't I use this more often? Right. I Chris, came back in and I was all proud of like, man, these things are great. Crisp I was sitting out nights. there on this crisp winter night. Stars were out. I was on the phone. Heat was hitting me on the back. Oh, I, yeah. You know, yeah. I paid all this money for this, this stuff. It's great. Man. It actually works great. Came in Jordan's like, yeah, but try to limit that. You know how expensive gas is? I'm like, oh, I can never do nothing. You ever tell Jordan like, I'm the fucking man of the house? <laughs> I know, but Does she that's know that? why. Like sometimes you just... You, you, you know got that? these options, but no, you should do t- repeat there's after a, me. There's a there's Does a cost. That? No, 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 no. Repeat, you know? repeat after me. Yeah, Jordan. I'm the fucking the man. Of that Maybe you want to keep that to a minimum. Does she know like, that? Yeah. Gas and gas are two different things. Does she yeah. know that? What? Does she know that gas and gas? Are two different things. No, the gas is exp- it does get expensive. No, no, she, no, she's a schoolgirl spot. She doesn't. Yeah, she's no, she's school she's an girl. idiot. Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, she's not young anymore. I mean, I'm, well, she, she's not. I mean, we, we I mean, sometimes we talk like, about we talk about Jordan sometimes. She's and she's not young. Chicken. If she's not young, how old did you make everybody feel? No, no, no. The but, joke no, I was but, making. But what I'm saying is, when we talk about Jordan you being young, the pee feel so old. Well, you make it seem like she's 20. She's she's a grown woman that's mature. She's not like a 20 year old girl that you're teaching the ropes to. Yeah. Or shooting, um, or I, shooting ropes, too. I was never implying that. By the way, um, breaking news in the sports world spot. Sports! Sports? Takes me a second. And we were live. Generic sports footage. The best live sports and entertainment podcast on earth. Sports. 
though I have to let you know that the Colts are trading quarterback Carson Wentz. And he's going to be the new quarterback. Oh, can I guess? Yeah. He's going to Steel Town. Nope. Carson Wentz. I don't see Garoppolo as a stealer. Starting quarterback, Carson Wentz is now... Ah! Seahawk? Nope. I thought that was a good fit, to be honest. On the Cleveland Browns? No. Carson Wentz. Jags. He's going back to the NFC East, this time with the Washington Commanders. Oh, Commanders. Commanders. Wow. Huh? Well, Russell wow. Wilson. That's the unfurling. Russell Wilson's gone. He's in Denver. Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Russell the, Wilson. His, we call it the Milton Berle unfurl. It's the domino effect. All right, Carson Wentz. Now, next up, Jimmy G. Next up. Jimmy We're, G is, is looking like Steelers. a Steeler now, and it, it's a weird fit. Does Derek whatever. Carr stay in, in uh, Oakland? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Las Vegas? If yeah. that's the case, that this, this so. unfurling to happen. Wow. How many people? Oh, by the way, speaking of things you don't use, the Peloton. Yeah, I'll be honest. I was all about that shit. I'll but be honest. Once the gym, I could have told you. Yeah, but I mean, I never denied it. Once the gym opened again, if I didn't go to the gym, then you could say, oh, you lazy piece of shit. I go to the gym every other day. So if I'm... It, the Peloton... And the stock is reflective. How is that a good for you? I used to go to the gym every other day. But what I'm saying is the Peloton and the stock price reflects this. The Peloton came in handy when the world was shut down. Now when you could go to the gym and... But even then you barely used it. What are you talking... When I... I used it... Are you, are you on drugs? Yes. I barely used it. I used it every day or so. What are you talking about? I take... Uh, no, I'm not going to tell... I'm not going to say what I take because I get yelled at by uh, I'll, weird I'll keto people. Taking shit laced with fentanyl. I'm seeing people drop dead with that. What do you think about uh, Jimmy G going to people who think Tampa following his old pal Tom Brady? Is that possible? Because um, Tampa needs a QB. Yeah, I know. I Cousins can leave Minnesota. Where does he that. go? I was thinking about so that. So the unfurling will continue. The million barrel unfurl. Someone, someone just said... Uh, there goes the commander season. I think Carson Wentz is a great quarterback. If he look stays at his, healthy. No, no, look at his stats. I saw uh, Colin Cowherd break this down. He does this great bit where he doesn't tell you who he's talking about, and he'll show you, like, stats and numbers and wins, and it's like, who do you think I'm talking about? And you, you're thinking it's someone better? It's like, it's Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is good. I think the commanders are going to win the division, possibly. Dance commanders. All right, well, hey, that's late-breaking news. Um, and, and by, by the, the way, way, Jordan who, wants you to know that her sister, yeah. Dallas and Colton, always use their game room for football nights and things like that. Um, always use their amenities. Colton is greater than I even thought. Guy's a good guy. Maybe he's just perfect. Kurt Henning? They, all, they use their multi-purpose room all the time for football games and Damn. company. And Well, I, I, I will tell the, the lovely Jordan, when I lived in Manhattan, it was a huge high-rise. And when I would go in that room... There was one Asian woman on her MacBook sitting by the window every single day. She used it. No one was on the pool tables, the ping pong tables, the movie room, which you could rent out. Brothers I never used, saw I one person in there. Brothers always used the pool table, so must not have been a lot in your building. Maybe not. I don't know. Even in college, we had a pool table. I can never get a game. Michael E. Carson so Wentz is a, Carson time. Wentz is a good quarterback. He's just it, when he's healthy, he's really productive. Now. Quarterbacks will unfurl. Keep an eye out. Oh, I love it. Football is even more exciting than other sports in its offseason. Well, it's getting late early, bro. Right. Yeah, let's... Uh, what you do you want to hear about? Family tree stuff. We'll see we got that. the we rando can, news. We can, we can, well, you, you, you mentioned the news, so I'll wrap it up. There's not, yeah. not a whole lot. Um, actually, Jackson Mahomes is being bombarded everywhere he goes. For as, mu for as much as people hate him, everywhere he goes, every young person wants a selfie. There's video of him at a Justin Bieber concert, and everyone's like... Wanting a selfie with Jackson Mahomes. So he's famous, but like annoying famous for younger people. Tony Hawk had a terrible skateboard accident, like shattered his leg. Did you yeah, see that? Sad, man. Yeah. No, old, you know, an he's old older. legend. He's older now. And like, man, I'm sure he's broken lots of bones in his life, but I heard it was pretty horrific. And I saw the x-ray. Yeah, it looks gross. <laughs> Not that I know, but it looks bad. Uh, the x-ray wasn't a joke. It wasn't with a penis in it. There was no. Yeah. There was a a woman. I can make this short. Who's twenty five years old or something like that? She has something called A R F I D, or as I call it, ARFID, which stands for ARFID. 
avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. Oh, I saw this. You saw this? Oh, no, you sent it to me. Oh, okay. So <laughs> long story it. short. I, like I didn't see this on my own. I think she's 25. Summer Monroe, who's 25, suffers from avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, ARFID, which means anything sort of healthy, it's, it's mental, as far as I know. I mean, maybe it's Marvin. physical, it's real. I don't, I don't know. But like, if you gave her a pee to eat, she'll like, want to gag and throw up, and she can't eat it. What about right? a pee? In fact, it's gone so far where family members have said to her, eat one pee, and I'll give you 2000 bucks." And she's like, I can't. Oh. So she eats nothing healthy because it makes her want to gag. There goes right? her social life. So she survived the past 22 years of her life on chicken nuggies, mm. potato chips, and french fries. And apparently, according to the story, she's 100% healthy. She hates peas. As she gets older, it might change. But yeah, for now, healthy. The thought of eating an apple or a banana is enough to make her gag. Imagine that. Nuggies. And does she like... like Deep fried like uh, veggies. Is like she just one of like those. Is she just sticks? one of those. Is she just one of those like young hotter girls? that's like I can eat McDonald's every day, and you're like, yeah, for now. She likes zucchini sticks. Like uh, no, Rich, she's she's almost thirty, so she's way old. Yeah. <laughs> you know uh, what I mean, bozo. Man, we must be really old then. Um, Spotty. Spot here. I wonder if she likes the boot flavored McNugget the best. Right? Because it's the best one. We the all know boot that. might be the we best. We all know the boot Because it the dips best. into the You know sauce. what I mean when I the say the boot, the right? Boot, yeah, boot. of course. <laughs> so there's the, here, like even in this image. Look at the boot. So this is the she boot. She already ate all the boots. This is the roundy. Yeah. This is the boot. There's another boot there in the bottom. Yeah. That's uh, a boot. The boots are, boot. are dippable. The boots are yeah, way the, that you the, dig the, into the corner uh, of the little sauce packet. Of course. So you you want to be able to get into the little ramekin, the little cup. Cuppy cup. I love how you call a little plastic container of sauce a ramekin. I will say that Heinz... Heinz has stepped it up. Don't you love... You know who does this? Uh, Chick-fil-A. When ketchup, com ketchup comes in the I could squeeze it or dip it container. I saved those bad boys. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The little, it's like the cuppy, yet the why, rippy. Yeah. Save those? Chick-fil-A. This guy's a fucking cheapskate, How do you not man. save those? Why don't you just buy... You're a successful man, right? Yes. Buy some fucking ramekins. Little dippy saucy no, things. I, I do have oh. ketchup in then the why fridge. Why do you got to save those? Cheap? I like those. I, I save Chick-fil-A sauces, too. I in case I'm ever in the mood. Hold on. Okay, dude. I, I thought you saved the plastic. I did. <laughs> That's what you meant. I no, saved that I, shit too. I, I, yeah. saved, I saved the on you. Yeah, I saved yeah, because yeah. I feel like sometimes not, I don't want cold. You're not crazy for doing I don't that. Want, sometimes you're I like don't. You don't think Danny Javier Fitz saves that shit? Of course I don't, he does. You know what I don't want? Everybody saves it. Sometimes I don't want cold refrigerator they ketchup. They charge you for that shit now. Of course you're going to save I it. I don't want cold refrigerator ketchup. By the way, Chick-fil-A is the only place that doesn't. They'll be like, what do you want? I'm like, 20 Chick-fil-A sauces. I'm like, yeah, no. Polynesian. I thought Rich <laughs> saved the actual plastic to like, I don't know, put his dippings in or something. Uh, right. I've, so, I haven't had a McNuggets in a long time either. The kids have it once I in a while, but I, I, I want McNuggets today. I want to go get some. Kind, yeah. know, know who's and got you know great nuggets? No, it's great nuggets. Chick-fil-A. Uh, yeah. It's so funny because when I was a and kid. And they had the grilled ones. Yeah. McNuggets were such a treat. Like we, for the family, we would order the 20 piece mm -hmm. and like we, we, you know, you would get to get a few <laughs> and you know, family four. You know. And now I'm like, I can afford to go get my own 20 piece. You know, my dad told me, my, and my dad's a relatively, oh, my dad's a relatively healthy no guy for 70. Uh, you know, knock on wood. My dad said, I gotta be honest. <laughs> Once in a while, he'll go to McDonald's. And I think he said he'll house like a 20 piece. Like he'll, I'll get all, I'll get a 20 piece of nugget. And he's like, I scoff it. Like, down. oh, I gotta, I gotta sit right here. And I got scoff it. Scoff, scoff. I scoff it. You can't uh, tell. See, it's right. the accent. I scoff it. What did you say? Scoff it. I don't know anyone that would buy Chick-fil-A sauce at the store when they give it to you for free. Because I see it now. Chick-fil-A everywhere on the... Oh. They, they, they have displays Trader now. Trader Joe's yeah. has, had now has a, a surgence of sauces from different restaurants, obviously under the Trader Joe's brand. Yeah, yeah. But they have a Chick-fil-A sauce. They uh -huh. have a burger sauce. Um, I forget like they have another one. But they have a couple different sauces you go. Sweet sauce. I agree with Becker. Chick-fil-A is so good. I guess I look past the fact that they hate gay people. <laughs> it's that good. It's that good. So I'm sorry, right. gay community. Chick-fil-A just tastes so damn good. Uh, gay Malone doesn't go. There. Yeah, just like no. for certain people. I love their, their product, like actors. I don't care what they do in their personal lives. I love, I love their movies. Chick-fil-A, what are you going to do? In um, news, just quick, real quick, right quick. I think our buddy Rudy in Texas sent this to us. Either way, shout out to Rudy, long overdue. Oh, Rudy. 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 If I had sex with Yokozuna, you get Rudy? Yeah. 
But now he's slimmed down. He's super handsome. Beautiful green eyes. Hazel eyes. Oh, yeah. Either way, I see them, Rudy. I wonder what's behind those hazel eyes. What is behind those hazel eyes? $45,000 a month. I want to give credit where it's due. <laughs> yeah, it is Rudy. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. What are they? He's Rudy Boudicca. <laughs> he said, sometimes in life you just have to say, what the F? He says, this is one of the craziest things I've seen on Twitter. And Did you send it to me? It's like a... Like, it's like something out of Twilight Zone the movie. You ever see Twilight Zone the movie when John yes. Lithgow is the he's he's the he's William Shatner because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a remake of yeah. the original episode where he's on the plane and he's on the plane. He's looking outside on the on the on the wing and there's a weird creature and the weird creature is like ripping out the wires and he's like, "There's something out of the way." Everyone thinks he's crazy. That's what this looks like. This looks like claymation of. Calibus, the Lord of the Swamp in, in Clash of the Titans. There's a weird creature, which is some monkey-like creature, some ape. And it's on top of a telephone pole, and it's there like King Kong, right? And he's like... Rrr. And it just snags a seagull out of the air. And it starts... Pa, 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 I saw penis. this. <laughs> and it's at what a zoo. The hell? And people is are like, oh real? my God, what's going on? Yeah, it's Calibus, the Lord of the Swamp. It looks like a claymation thing. Oh, Look at this. Is that one of those flying monkeys? <laughs> It looks like the the animal oh, from eating it from Twilight Zone. It's a monkey. It grabs. Look, look what it does, though. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame. Oh it. my god! Seagulls are the. What's happening? Turn rats around, of kids. the sky. They're the rats of the ocean. Dad, he killed the seagull. Isn't that wild? Uh, it's it's, snag it's like, nature, bro. Yeah, it's yeah, nature. Yeah. I had, you know what I had to do. Um, it's uh. Nurture by nature, Rich's favorite hip hop group of Amy, the nineties. Uh, Emmy likes Emmy likes watching like animal stuff, and we, we you know <laughs> you know when like YouTube will just play the next video. Emmy's learning about herbivores and carnivores, and she gets it. But like sometimes they'll show like animals like in the wild, like not just killing other animals. Like rah, and I'm like, yo, Sarah, we can't change cha change the channel. Like like a bloody you know. Deer carcass with lions eating it. It's like, yeah, I don't think the where kids should see this. You where, where you watch? Where do you watch? like YouTube videos about animals oh, and stuff. YouTube, like yeah. YouTube videos. Like, like, is animals. this something like Coco Melon? Yeah, so, Coco Melon, yeah. It's like a little King Kong clip, man. It's crazy. It looks that like thing the snag the seagull. Yeah, and Coco Melon. J JJ was, uh, <laughs> if you're not watching, the, 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 the monkey climbs a telephone pole, like, like the Empire State Building, and then he snags in midair a seagull. A seagull. <laughs> And it starts banging its head against it. Until it kills it. Yeah, and then and it eats kills it. it and it eats it. It's like, dang. Yo, it is wild. It's cold-blooded. So, there you have it. That's it. There's nothing really else going on. You know, someone hit us up yesterday. And they said, really, man? You're going to talk about fucking socks when all this stuff's going on in the world? If you want to hear about gas and war, find another show. Who said that? I mean, why give him, you want to give him a shout no, out? No, but I'm saying like, do, like, uh, yeah. does that person really read, read want Kavino's thoughts on the Ukraine? Read the text messages, some doozies about you. I read them just to see what people are saying about you. Nah, I don't. <laughs> uh, no, so I said, hey man, you want us to talk about war and gas? I'm, I'm choosing not to for a reason, have fun. Yeah. That's what this is supposed to be. Of course we acknowledge those things. Yeah. I, I don't, I try not to engage but with yeah. the hate. One of my, one of my high school buddies uh, like told me my biggest problem was that I engaged too much with He's right. With our listeners. Give too much. He's like, you, 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 stop. Stop stop fighting with people. But uh, yeah, very primal clip. I agree. I am key. Thank you. Um, Eric, Soul Patch Eric, who just celebrated a birthday, said, Kavino, I'm surprised you're not down with this. He goes, uh, hold on, where was it? He said, Cove. Jimmy G to Pittsburgh seems like a great fit. Why would you not like that? So they have a good run like game. They have a good run game. They have good weapons and a tight end. No, 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 no. And a good coach. Like image, image wise, I don't feel like he's. I have he's good weapons and a tight for end. Steelers. He's like, uh, he's a little fucking too handsome yeah. for like a blue collar Steeler. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, like image wise, like so, I don't see, uh, I don't see him as a Raider either. Well, we're you know, also like, getting reports that. But is he a, a fit? A fit? Yeah. Okay. Great. Dildo. So Eric, uh, Eric's right. I'm just saying I don't see it like. Those Dilla, fans really rallying around that, that kind of guy. Well, the next thing might be Jimmy G to Pittsburgh, or uh, it could be that uh, there's Ian Rappaport is saying, perhaps keep an eye on Jimmy Garoppolo now to the Colts. What's Michael Rappaport oh, yeah. saying? So Jimmy G, Michael Rappaport's getting hit in the head by, with a snowball. <laughs> and snowball. other people are saying, the Giants, get this, you thought the Giants might stick with uh, Daniel Dr. Jones. Jones, Daniel Jones. They might go after Mitch Trubisky. If Trubisky doesn't get the starting position in Indianapolis, 
the Giants might say, we want Mitchell Trubisky. So, so that's your the quarterback news. unfurling. The Milton Burrell unfurl. It's happening. Um, two more quick notes in the news alerts, and then I'll tell you one story before we get out of here. Any shout outs to give? Did you hear about the, uh, they just found this like cool shipwreck? Did you hear about that? I have. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I saw that. Ernest Shackleton's, uh, it's, a, it's the most preserved wooden ship that they've seen. It sank a hundred years ago off, the, off of uh, so Antarctica. Where is it? <laughs> it's cold. It's really cold wherever it is. I think Jimmy G's too pretty for Indianapolis. Antarctica. That's what Mark says. I agree. <laughs> Isn't that cold helmet and everything? Jimmy G, no. He's, let me see the shipwreck Look at this. Look how cool that looks. Yo, arr, arr, it's got a wheel. Yo, Spot is how showing us ship. pictures, and Yo. it really does look like some one eye willy shit. Did that you guys cool. the story a Yarr, few weeks ago? Ship. The endurance. I got to give credit. Jordan's good at throwing Lost stories at me. And she thinks I don't listen, but I absorb them, and I, like, I'm yeah. taking a shit later on. I'm like, yeah, that is, that is kind of crazy. I mean, why would you listen to someone uh, so old? Yeah. She's like, she got knowledge there, was an, there was an ocean liner that, that, that sank, and there was 4,000 vehicles on... 40,000 vehicles on the ocean liner. Oh, like a she's like, can transport you, ship? She's like, can you imagine like in the future what happens if they're, if they're discovered one day? People are going to be like, what the hell happened here? They'll just turn around and sell them like they did I'm like, during wait, the flood. how many? 40,000? I, I, I feel weird saying that right that's now. A sta- four- that's a stadium full of cars. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> I was like, was it 40,000 or 40,000? No 000? damage. Please look that up, Spot. Because sell. it sounds crazy to say it out loud. Some sort of ocean liner sank. 40,000 40, vehicles. Think of how much, and it was like, you know, crazy amount of money lost. That many vehicles are now at the bottom of the ocean. I, I don't even know how ship. much that is. I did 40,000 times 40,000, and it's like 1.6 E9. I don't even know what that means. What is it? A large cargo ship. Uh, like how does that, how's that not cars news? from Germany to the United States. There goes your uh, BMW. Uh, sank Tuesday in the Mid-Atlantic. 13 days after a fire broke out on board. What? Dude, like... Uh, included Porsches, Lamborghinis, ben- and Bentleys. How many cars, though? Um, what's the amount of cars? I mean, because still... Uh, let's no, see. they said it oh. could be in a result... It says a result of... Uh, maybe not that many cars, because it's saying $155 million worth of vehicles. Bro, I'm pretty certain she said 40,000 Maybe she meant 4,000. I don't know. That seems dude. a bit more realistic. Know, with your, four, with your number, four thousand, four thousand vehicles. Still, four thousand is a lot. Four thousand, but still, Lambos. Oh, my maybe Lambo. Maybe she did say four thousand. Damn it, my Lambos maybe, at the bottom maybe, of the maybe, ocean. Maybe, my brain said maybe, forty thousand. Maybe, maybe you didn't listen as closely as you thought crazy. you did. <laughs> but still, that's insane. There's four. Even still, somewhere in the depths of the ocean, he told the insurance company it was forty thousand. <laughs> There's four thousand fucking exotic cars, just there. Yeah. In the future, like the, how do you truck that? I was like, I don't know, man. Sorry. After the uh, the boat just sank. After the after the extinction level event and a new society uh, comes together in a thousand years, they're gonna be like, what do we find on the ground? What are these spaceships? Yeah. Yeah. They, were, they were towing it and then it just started to sink. Can you imagine? That's oh, like a, that's a big mistake. That's a shame. That's so, a le- I agree with Caleb. That's at least a hundred k, hundred twenty five thousand dollars a car. When you talk about these elite sports cars and Lamborghinis, damn. times four thousand, man. Imagine my my thought process when Jordan was telling me this. I was like, man, Jordan, Jordan, you just need Jordan, you just need subtitles full. on Jordan. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, this is a stadium <laughs> full of cars. Then hear you. That's wild. I gave her the. But then I I was like, man, that's crazy. That's wild. That is crazy. That's just sitting there under the ocean like that ship that was just discovered. So anyway, two other quick your, uh, two other quick headlines and we'll okay. uh, the news. Um, I know it's already. It's already been announced, but for wrestling fans, they got to be pretty psyched, uh, pretty psyched and stoked that Stone Cold Steve Austin will be wrestling at WrestleMania. Saw that, yeah. He hasn't fought in a while, hasn't gotten the ring, but for all the old school fans, like what what Hulk Hogan and Macho Man meant to us, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan. Have you seen that or no? No. Someone was selling like an old toy. It was, but it was a Hulk Hogan toy. Hulk Hogan. Well, a Hulk Hogan. Think think about what the Hulkster and Macho Man and that generation meant to us people that are five to 10 years younger than us, like my wife and her friends. Yeah. They were all about the rock and stone cold. So to see stone cold, get back in the ring. Probably pretty cool. I know the wrestling fans are psyched about stone cold. Steve Austin, who's always been really cool. Wanda Sykes hosting the Academy Awards. He's also, uh, he's also been very cool to us over the years. So stone cold, cool dude. And I want to see Hulk Hogan. I do, but I don't know how you missed the big story of the day. How do you know I did? Maybe I just didn't think it was that dope. Well, it's better than 
anything we've talked about as far as like <laughs> nothing's intrigue. better than Dimitri. Don't touch me. There's this whole, there's this whole. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Whole Kogan spot. I sent you the, the clip real quick. Just real quick, just to, because it's dumb. And that's what we focus on. You want to talk about war and gas? Watch something else. War and gas. War and gas. What's the, war and gas. Is that your book you're writing? <laughs> war and gas. War and gas. Yeah, no, it's called My War with Gas. <laughs> Steve Cavino, My War with Gas. Sale? Very rare. Stands on its own, can be played with nice joints. Hard to find a better Hulk Hogan in good condition. $20. Hulk Hogan. Oh, How could you forget Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. I've, I've seen that guy on, on TikTok. He's funny. Someone wrote an uh, like a classified ad, but they were selling a Hulk Hogan. People are saying they got to dust off their Austin 316 shirts. By the way, the Stone Cold documentary was fantastic. Have you ever seen that? Those A and E wrestling ones. Loved it. Anyway, the story of the day. And Becker's we're right. Not, you know, I am interested, more interested in going to Stone Cold Creamery. <laughs> Stone Cold Creamery. Um, you mean Cold Stone I Creamery? Know. I know. Nice try, though, Becker. No, a, that's I, the joke. I, 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 I guess I'll get to some of these personal stories tomorrow, but I'm so that. surprised you haven't brought this up. Primetime. Deion Sanders. Oh. I was unaware of how severe his foot issues were, that he had all these surgeries on his feet and everything, and he was in bed shape. He had to have... Two toes amputated. You didn't see this? Primetime Deion Sanders? I missed it. Look up. Deion Sanders had to have two toes. Pobrecitos. Amputated. His feet were so banged up from playing and different things that were going on that he had to have two toes amputated. The guy's got eight toes now. He he lost a big toe. He lost toes. He lost toes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. On his left foot. Yeah, I, I mean, and... They're doing a docu series on Barstool because Dion's involved with Barstool, Joe. and he Final look at him. Procedure: the amputation of uh, his big toe and his second toe, which was very emotional. Oh, right, here we go. Prime time. All these guys got feet issues. You notice that? Like all these elite athletes, feet issues. Is that how? No, no. Cutting off his tootsies. Poor prime time. His know. toes. Also, his gray beard. Who was money, clothes, and toes? <laughs> What's wrong with his toe? Who is the elite athlete? Does he get to keep the toes? Cove, you can turn it off. Yeah, oh my some, god! Uh, Who is the elite some, uh, athlete uh, before pickle, our pickle time? Jar. Before our time. Yeah. Don't eat my toes. Who was the elite baseball player who their foot took him down? It had to be like a Ted Williams or someone. Where it's like it, there was an elite. Was it Mickey Mantle? There was There's an elite. A sprinkler. No, 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 not not a sprinkler. I'm I'm saying a legend, like retired earlier than they possibly could have, and it was like, yeah, they just had a bad foot. It was like Stan Musial. Someone had a bad foot, and you're like, yo, feet are the most underrated injury in all of sports. You see it all the time. Guys are sidelined for feet injuries. Was it like an Alkay line, dude? I don't know. I know it's a stupid thought, but it was someone that. Once you hear it, you be like, "Oh yeah, that's right." It was, honestly, it was like a Mickey Mantle or someone that's like, you know, the the, why their career, battery. you know, why their career ended, why their arm, their shoulder, no, no, uh, their toe. Hank Greenberg, I'm telling you, it might have been Mickey Mantle. Yeah, because it was a, sp- a sp- the sprinkler story, no, where someone got mangled in the sprinkler, and no, I, don't, I don't, that's not what I'm thinking. Sprinkler, baseball injury. Baseball injury sprinkler. Okay, robot baseball. Baseball injury. injury sprinkler. You sound more like a robot than the robot. Baseball legend retired feet. <laughs> let's see, see. Let's see what comes. Yeah, let's see what comes up first. Yeah. Mickey Mantle's worst injury. It was Joe DiMaggio's was play. Joe let's DiMaggio's see. play. He got caught in a sprinkler. I then it was, and then. Was it Mickey Mantle? Oh, uh, that was the play, but Mickey Mantle uh, retired because of a foot, right? Oh, he just had bad health all around. Mickey. Wear and tear. He was just getting injured all the time. Ted Williams. Running at full speed. Stop like, short. Are you thinking of like Bob Marley? I feel like it was a cleat on Mantle's shoe caught on a piece of the underground lawn sprinkler apparatus in the outfield. He had to be carried off the field in a stretcher and later revealed 
The youngster had suffered a sprained right knee that would sideline him for the rest of the series. Gee, how did I know that? It's before my dying. He failed to move after he went down. Thought he fainted. It was extremely serious and required many operations. You ever see Shaq's toes? You ever see LeBron's toes? This is gonna be. It was a big contributor to why Mantle never reached the great heights predicted for him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, all you ever, taken see, down uh, by you ever see Steven Tyler's toes? Oh my God. Yeah, Some people got busted toes. Remember it was on our show. I got see? toes. Snaggle toe. You ever see, uh, who was it? Was it LeBron? Snaggle toes? Yeah, snaggle toes. Anyway, yeah, that's sad, man. Poor, poor I mean, Dion. Think, think about it. When you're moving a lot, right? You really are like relying on these like little digits on your fingers that are your feet that are like it, it's so stupid they're but so tiny and they're, so they stupid, control you, your direction you could have a major injury that could slightly debilitate you but if you have like a paper cut on your pointer finger it's almost more irritating because you don't realize how often you you use it by the way i saw you know what i watched part of last night because sarah was sleeping and i was just flipping through i watched a little part of contagion because it's on some streaming service and i watched finally a, 2011 so Finally. many so many references that i we told you to watch this movie I know. in march of 2020 i i watched it spot and sure did. It took I, two I fucking had seen years it. no i had seen it in 2011 but i re, i i'd seen it but i as a reminder during it took the a year first, to use a shower it's true during the first month of the pandemic i told you to watch that pandemic series on netflix and the movie yeah, came no, to yeah, but, but, I, but i was because it perfectly described yeah, no, it what was, we were going it through was a, it was a quickie movie i was up late last night and by the way, Marion Cotillard, am I right? In that movie, uh, I don't even know what my point was. What was my point? Lawrence Fishburne? No. L- Larry Fishburne was in it. Or was oh. It, or is it Sam Jackson? No, they say in that movie, you t- you use your pointer fingers and you touch your face some absurd amount of times a day, like 2,000 times a day you touch your face. No, Rich, you don't touch your face because you're, you're aware of touching your face. That's what you told me once. And then remember, I made a montage of you touching your face. Yeah, that was great. Oh, uh, yeah, you probably did. That was great. In one show. I remember that. Yeah. But 2,000 times a day, huh? I believe it. I'm going to touch my face right now. <laughs> That's the rando news of the day. <laughs> Sorry. Brought to you by D's. I didn't get to play the graphics. So I want to paint now. Right. News. Starting to hear about those toes. They just touch his face. Money, clothes, and toes. Russell Wilson. All of Dion knows. Um, Talked about the shit. You know, my three big thoughts, I got to none of them because we just had so much action today. So then you know what? Tell us what's in store tomorrow. for tomorrow. What's in store for tomorrow? Tomorrow, Rich and I head to Vegas right after the show to do some stuff for Sirius XM as Cavino and Rich. The irony. Oh, I can't uh, get over it. Could we, uh, yo, let's start an hour later tomorrow, right? We're cool with that? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to start an hour later. I want you to get a, have a petition signed by everyone in the chat right now. Yeah, petition side. We're going to start an hour later tomorrow because if you want to know the truth, the truth is if we do the show normal time, there's too much of a gap between the end of the show of what, and then when we need to go to the airport. If we push the show back an hour tomorrow, we could finish the show and then Kavino and I could sort of go straight to the airport. So why not do that? So tomorrow, 10 a.m. West Coast time. We'll do a little later tomorrow. Full action pack throwback Thursday show tomorrow, but an hour later. Um, I want to talk about your suit game tomorrow. I tried on my suit last night. Did it fit? Yeah. I I, I probably shouldn't eat bad for the next week and a half, oh. if, but it's 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 like a little snug, but like not not snug where it's snug. Like you know, I, I probably shouldn't eat uh, Taco Bell and burgers for the next two weeks, but I've been eating uh, trying to eat healthy. Anyway. Is it as snug as a pug? In an UG on a rug? With a bug, yeah. Absolutely. Nope. You ever see that meme? You never saw the meme spot? I've seen it. <laughs> but to, I want to talk about... bug in an UG? I want to talk about suit game. I want to talk rug? about a suit game tomorrow because I was talking to one of my old school friends that's going to this wedding and we were trying to decide. So think about this. What are the biggest indicators of how old someone is? And I think... Suit is a great indicator. I, I came up with four things. I'll throw them out there. I want you to think of more for tomorrow. Ready? Haircut's another one. Suit. Shoes. Haircut. Let's get some shoes. Makeup style. This is for women, this too. Makeup style. And what type of phone case you have. <laughs> so cute. Those are all great indicators. 
So there's a suit story though, Rich. So I have, I, have so. A, I have a suit story. Man. Um, I, I have a deep thought that I thought about when I was uh, getting all chill, having an edible, and it has to do with your your lineage, your family tree. Oh, I love that. And my mother has a plan. How far back does the Bozo family tree go? My mother has I a plan. I thought it was a Goomberger. <laughs> my mother has a plan. Get yeah, this. Bozo Goomberger. Get thing. this. I think, the mo- I think my mother's closing on her house is actually going to happen this week. Oh, wow. Which means... She needs to figure out where she's living. And, and in the world of Marianne and Butch, I had a deep thought about strippers' boobs. I did once. All right, sorry. What was my deep thought about strippers' boobs? I don't know. Oh, I know what it was. It was how many hands have touched them? No, that wasn't it. I think it, it was, was, I think it I was like, it. Really? if you're a stripper, yeah. you've probably I had a deep had, thought about strippers' boobs. You probably have thousands of hands touch your boobs. But my, my, uh, my mom, if she closes on her house, Needs to then find what, Cavino? A place Another to house live. To live. A place to live. Get this. My mother, I think, has decided where she wants to live. And it's not anywhere we've spoke about before. The hype house? Oh, that, that uh, big $250 million house in the Runs house. house. So <laughs> she bought it. Tomorrow, heard much. an update on uh, a family update on. Where is my mom going to end up, and what's my role in the whole thing? Shaq's house. Um, a deep thought about your, a uh, deep stoner thought about your family lineage, and we'll talk about your suit game and age indicators a lot tomorrow. I'm going to save all this good stuff. So write it down. I have. I'm not going to throw out my notes. Just jump right into yeah. it. We'll jump into it tomorrow. Uh, until then, have a good one. Sorry. What is that? Just look at your clips. Colvino. No, it's one of those things. Like, like some Colvino. people hear Rich Davis. I'll oh, play it again. What do I hear? Hold on. I, some people hear Oh, Covino. whatever you want to hear. Real quick before we go. Yeah. Sorry. Colvino. I right, try to hear Colvino. 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 All right, now try to hear Rich Davis. Colvino. Colvino. I heard, I heard Davis. Rich Davis. I heard, I heard Colvino. I heard, I heard, I heard now try Davis. to hear Covino. Okay, okay. Colvino. Colvino. I now try to hear Rich Davis. Colvino. 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 Whatever you try to hear, I think is what you hear. Yeah. I don't know. At the end there, I really heard Rich Davis. Really, pushed, I heard Covino every really time. Pushed through. It's really weird. Really pushed really through weird. on that end there. Well, it's, it's our very own Laurel and Yanni. Sorry, I don't know. Green Storm. Yeah. Got the Green Needle. Yeah. yeah, that little press the button thing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not All right, well, hey, where does where uh, Marion and Butch move? I can't You'll wait. be surprised. It's I'm like, really? Can't what? wait. No. Get out of here. Can't wait. When? How? What? So we'll get to that. Plus, uh, like I said, a bunch of other great stuff that tomorrow. Mandy Moore. Mandy Moore. I didn't say Mandy Moore. I said oh. many more. Oh. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, arrivederci, baby. See you in the promised land. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys.